Wait, can you hear that? Sounds like someone's knocking on your door, and you aren't expecting anyone. Well, maybe that's just your neighbor come to ask for some garden tools again. You get up to go downstairs, but then you hear the noise of metal scratching in the keyhole. You stop, frozen in fear. Seconds later, you can hear the door clicking. The problem is that you live alone. First, let's make sure there really is someone in the house. But you should be very quiet in case there's a burglar. Look outside the house to search for traces. Can you see anything suspicious? Is there an unknown vehicle close to your house? Maybe you can spot some footsteps or broken window. Was the fence gate open? There might also be hints inside the house. But be careful if you're looking for them. Make sure you can't be seen. Maybe there's some lights off that are usually on. Or maybe there's some mud on the floor that wasn't there before. Listen carefully to the sounds. Maybe you can hear some footsteps or movement or the creak of a door. Wait, did you hear it? Looks like someone bumped into your tea table. Okay, it looks like there really is someone in your house. So your next step is to try to get out of the house to be safe. If it's possible, leave altogether. Both the front door or the back door or even a window works. If it's a bit risky, you might want to try and escape. An injury is nothing compared with your life. If escaping is not an option, then lock yourself somewhere. Bedrooms are usually the first rooms burglars check because that's where most people keep their valuables. So it's better to stay away from them. Still, if there's no other way, bedrooms better than nothing. Lock it and pretend you're asleep. But if you can, then better hide somewhere else. The bathroom is a great choice because it's usually not of interest to burglars. Now, stay quiet. The burglar probably won't spend more than 10 minutes in your house. If the intruder doesn't find your inside, you'll avoid confrontation. The most important thing is you staying safe. So don't move or make any noise. As soon as you're safe and hidden, call the police immediately. Remember, when calling them, always give your location first. In case something happens and you're not able to finish your conversation, at least they'll know where to go. If you can do it without being noticed, try to study the intruder as carefully as you can. Make sure to remember their height, body type, the way of walking, hair color, race, gender, age, and any other specific details you might notice. Anything you can spot will be helpful. If you can look outside and see the vehicle, remember its brand, color, and the license plate number. Then, wait again. Just freeze and never leave the place you've chosen until the burglar leaves or the authorities arrive and help you out. But burglars don't go to any random house. They don't want to be noticed. So they choose their target very carefully. And you can make it so they don't pick yours. Make your house an open space. The greenery makes the house harder to observe, so burglars pick those houses that have the most of it. Make sure to trim all the shrubbery that hides windows and doors. Turn on the lights as soon as it's dark every day of the year. Illuminate everything – the porches, the driveway, the yard, both the front and the backyard. First, it makes the surroundings more visible, and burglars will prefer to stay away. Second, it makes an impression that there's someone home and they don't want anyone to be there when they break in. Lock all the doors and windows. People forget to close their bathroom window, and burglars know it very well. There should never be a way in. Don't leave any secret way to enter the house in case you forget your keys. If you know about such a way, so do burglars. If you have any trees too close to your house, cut the branches so it's not possible to climb it and get into any of the windows. Keep all of your tools and store ladders in a locked garage. Don't ever keep them lying around when you don't use them, because they can all be used to break into your house. Don't have any spare keys hidden in random places outside the house. Better give one to a neighbor you trust. When you move into a new house or apartment, change the locks if possible. Make sure that your doors look modern and reliable. Old and bad doors that are easy to crack attract burglars. Don't throw away copies of documents or unnecessary checks just like that. Burglars can check your trash to learn more about you. So shred documents into itty-bitty pieces before you throw them away. Don't leave boxes from a new plasma TV, expensive phone, laptop, or gold watch near your house. 
Don't show anybody that you're well off. Make sure that the house number is clearly displayed and can be easily noticed. This way, the authorities or any other help will be able to find your house way faster. Even if you have security cameras installed, they don't guarantee that your house won't become a target. The cameras are helpful when finding the robber after everything's happened, but they don't prevent any action. Many robberies happen when people are away for some holiday, so the burglars shouldn't find out you're not going to be home for a long time. Whenever you leave, make it look like you're actually home. Tell your neighbors you're leaving. Ask them to keep an eye out on your house and check it from time to time. To check if there's someone currently living in the house, burglars often check the mail. If the mailbox is full, it means there's no one living there right now. Ask your neighbor to collect the mail for you and clean the porch from ads and newspapers. Burglars may also leave marks on your house. For example, they can put a thin strip cut from a plastic bottle into the doorway. If it stays on the door for one or two days, this tells the burglar that there is no one at home. So ask your neighbor to check these things out too. Ask them to park their car occasionally in front of your house for a while. This will give an impression that you have visitors. Still, if the house stands quiet for days, it's obvious there's no one living there currently. You can set up a timer for lights, radio, or TV so it works a couple of hours a day. If you're leaving for a long time, make arrangements so that your grass is cut and watered or the snow in front of your house is shoveled. It's a good idea not to post photos from your vacation while you're there. Burglars use social media, and they do their research. It's dangerous even if you have a private account, because burglars can collaborate with tech-savvy criminals. They would break into the accounts of rich people, find out when they were going on vacation, and inform the burglars about it. But before someone breaks into your house, they watch it for a while. They want to know when you're home and when you're not. If you start getting many random calls, it might be a sign that they check what time of the day you're out. If the light sensors start malfunctioning, check immediately if everything's alright. This doesn't always mean there are problems with electricity. Burglars may cut the wiring. Watch out for doors. If you notice scratches on the lock or it's becoming harder for you to open the door with your key, it might mean that someone tried to break into your house. Change the locks immediately. A break-in starts with a knock on the door. If you happen to be home at the time, it's important to learn how to answer it to scare them away. Always pretend like you're not home alone. You can call out something like, Can anyone answer the door, please? Teach your kids that they should never answer the door or open it to anyone unsupervised. Did you know that every 15 seconds, a home burglary occurs in the United States? This means that approximately 4,800 burglaries happen every day, and the police can only solve 13% of all the reported cases. So yeah, home security is nothing to be joked about, and so I won't. But still, don't worry. It's not like you need to turn your house into a fortress to feel safe. There are a great number of things you can do to keep the bad people out of your house and keep your valuables safe without breaking the bank. First things first, homes without a security system are 300% more likely to be broken into and burglarized, so you should definitely consider setting up one. However, there are many different types of security systems out there. That's why it can get overwhelming to choose the best one for your specific needs, desired level of protection, and budget. Yet again, it all comes down to two options – professional installations and DIY installations. Let's go through both of them together. Professional installed systems require professional monitoring and usually have contracts that are likely long-term. Professional systems come with fees. However, companies usually require lower upfront equipment costs since they will spread the cost throughout the course of your contract. Once you decide on a professional installation, the company will first schedule an appointment with one of their experienced technicians who can conduct a security assessment and explain all your options to you. And as long as your contract is valid, you can report any problems you have with the system to them so they can make sure the equipment works correctly. All in all, you should pick professionally installed security systems if you want to put up your feet and relax instead of watching long hours of tutorial videos or reading pages of manuals. Still, 
professionally installed security systems may not work for you, especially if you're a renter, due to the contract commitment conditions. Or maybe you're not a renter, but you simply have budget limitations. That's where DIY installations come in handy. The greatest thing about DIY systems is that while the average monitoring price is around $50 per month on professionally installed systems, it is around $28 a month on DIY ones. Plus, there are no installation fees with DIY systems either. Yet again, you should expect higher upfront equipment costs if you're going to pick this option. And there's also the fact that DIY home security systems come with the risks of improper equipment placement and missing security vulnerabilities a pro would catch. At the end of the day, the most important thing you need to do before choosing a system is evaluate the needs of your neighborhood as well as your house. Did you know that 34% of burglars simply use the front door when breaking into a home? That means if your door is not strong and secure enough, you're basically inviting the burglars in. So setting up security systems is not enough. You need to inspect all your exterior doors, too. Make sure the door frames are strong and the hinges are protected. You can always use door reinforcement kits to add extra protection. If your door has a mail slot, don't forget to check if it's possible for someone to reach through it to unlock the door. When moving into a house or an apartment that was previously occupied by someone else, change the door locks. This is the easiest way to ensure that no stranger can just walk into your house using the keys. One other way to boost security for your door is to use wireless doorbell cameras. This one from Amazon is extremely user-friendly. It's 100% wireless, it has a built-in rechargeable battery that can last 1-2 to two months, so you won't have to charge those too often. You can track the battery situation from the phone app. It also has motion detection technology and super night vision. And you don't need to worry about the weather conditions because it's also waterproof. By the way, don't forget about the sliding glass doors. You can use a window bar or dowel in the track to keep them from being forced open. Or you can add a door sensor or glass break sensor to get alerted if and when someone is tampering with them. We're getting into the very basics of home security now. The percentage of burglars entering a home through a window is as high as 23%. The main reason for that is because, most of the time, people forget to lock their windows. Yet again, burglars can always break the glass. If you don't want that to happen, you can try reinforcing the glass with window security film, adding window bars, or installing window sensors. If none of that is possible, you can also plant prickly bushes under the first floor windows to discourage burglars from choosing your house to break in. Now, what's the difference between an actor and a burglar? Burglars don't like to be in the spotlight. (laughs) That's why having outdoor lighting is to your advantage. Lights should be placed around your front and backyards, along pathways, and near the garage. To make your outdoor security lights more effective, You can use motion-activated ones. Take this one for example, it's solar-powered, so it'll help you save energy. But that doesn't mean you won't have any light once the clouds cover the sky. It's able to run 4 to 5 nights on rainy days. Also, don't allow the burglars to play hide-and-seek. While trees and shrubs may make your home look more beautiful, they also provide a convenient hiding spot for burglars. That's why you should trim down trees and plants, at least the ones close to your house that could be used for cover. Choose smaller flowers and bushes instead, so that burglars don't have a hiding spot to wait for you to leave your home. The same thing goes for any lock gates, sheds, or other outdoor buildings you have. Make sure those places are locked. Burglars can use stools and ladders to climb in from the windows, too, so don't tempt them by leaving one outside. Now this one goes without saying, but I will anyway. Lock the garage. Even if there's no access to your home through there, it's likely that you still have plenty of valuable stuff stored in there that burglars might be interested in. It's also wise to store your garage door opener inside your house rather than leave it in your car. This way, you'll be preventing burglars from easily taking it. If you use a security code to open your garage, then keep it confidential and avoid entering it in front of other people, including neighbors. Some neighbors, well, you just don't know. Installing a driveway alarm will also help secure the garage. 
Now these days, not just burglars, but porch pirates, aka package thieves, are a big problem too. Last year, almost 1 in 7 Americans fell victim to them. This is where security cameras proved to be useful. First of all, they work as a deterrent. And secondly, if someone were to really steal your package, you'd be able to identify them thanks to the security footage. If you can't spare some money to get a good security camera for the time being, you can opt for a fake one. They're a lot cheaper, and they will help make your home look more secure than it actually is. This one is worth considering if you're searching the market. It contains a flashing light which makes it look as realistic as it gets. Now last but not least, having a safe wouldn't hurt. And don't worry, it doesn't have to be one of those uncrackable giant titanium ones in the heist movies, like Ocean's 23. Burglars may still be able to break into your house despite all the precautions. So you still need to make sure your valuables are protected at all times. You can hide all things important from your expensive jewelry to your vital documents in there just to be extra safe. If you're going to get yourself one, make sure it is fire-resistant, waterproof, and heavy enough that a thief can't pick it up and walk away with it. As they say, better safe than sorry. You wake up in the middle of the night from a noise coming from downstairs. First thing you need to do is check what the noise is. If you suspect someone's in your house, do this quickly and quietly. It might just be a mouse that knocks something over. Still, if your suspicions are confirmed and you see someone in your dining hall, look for a way out immediately. Use the fire escape ladder if you have one. Otherwise, a window might do the trick. Still, chances are you'll have to stay put. Grab the phone and call the authorities. Give them your address and explain the situation as briefly as you can. And in a heartbeat, they'll dispatch a unit to your house. Reaching your street, they can't find your house number anywhere. They get there eventually, but only after having followed the numbers from other houses in the neighborhood. By the time the authorities arrive, the burglars already escaped. That's because your house number can barely be seen. It's so tiny. Your mailbox's one is barely noticeable, too. Get a new and shiny plaque. Make sure the number's big and visible. This will not only help your guests find your house sooner, but you'll also avoid the authorities missing your house next time. While you're at it, make sure the mailbox number is visible too. Another good way to protect your house is by adding a fence to it if you don't already have one. Make sure it's hard to get through. Use chain link or even metal fencing. Dig it into concrete as well so burglars can't lift it. If you're okay with a rough look, you can even try out barbed wire fencing. Next up, add lighting to your yard because if your yard's all dark, It'll be a perfect target for unwanted visitors. Keep a few lamps outside that you can turn on and off. A well-lit yard will let you see what's up outside, and your neighbors too. If they spot someone, they'll call you and the authorities if need be. A spotlight camera is an extra. It usually stays off during daytime and works with a motion detector. It's really bright and lights up when it senses any movement. You can even get one that also starts recording at once. So not only will you frighten burglars, but will also have video proof in case anything does happen. Another thing is a ring camera. Whenever someone rings the door, you can pick it up without even being home. Since your phone's connected to the doorbell, you only need to answer the call wherever you are. If it's someone you don't know and you're smelling something fishy, you can pretend to be home and let them know you're not interested. Dense shrubs in your yard will give the burglar a place to hide, and you might not even notice there's someone trespassing. Keep your shrubbery closely trimmed. It'll not only keep you safe, but also add a bit more shine to your yard. While you're out on vacation, avoid posting your whereabouts on social media. Say someone's had your house on their radar for a while now. You being gone is the perfect opportunity for them to strike. Leave posting the nice pictures you took for when you get back home, and you can keep an eye on things. Oh, and don't show people what you do day to day either. It'll be easy for someone to keep track of your daily schedule and plan an assault for when you're out grocery shopping, for example. This one's obvious, but always lock your home when you leave, even if you think you live in a safe neighborhood. And if you've just moved into a new house, change your locks too. It works for apartments as well, or even if you're just renting a room, you can never be too safe. 
always keep the appearance that someone's inside the house, <laughs> even when it's empty. The first way to do it is leave your television on, or even better, buy a TV simulator. This way, you can program it to turn on and off as you please. I mean, it'd be weird if it was constantly on. It'll save you a couple of bucks as well, because simulators consume less than the real thing. Get a plug-in alarm clock as well and connect a lamp to it. Set timers for it to go off, let's say dinner time and for a while at night. You can also get an extra alarm clock and connect a radio to it. If people think you're blasting some tunes, they surely won't try to do anything. Don't forget any valuable items outside, things like your grill, bikes, and any machinery you might have. Store them inside your garage instead and lock it tight. Security cameras outside your home will let you keep an eye on things even while you're at work. This one's particularly good if you're extra worried someone's going to break in. Consider reinforcing your door, even if it's relatively new. Instead of breaking in, they might try and completely knock down the door if they're desperate to get in. Get a sturdier one that won't come down easily. This goes for windows too. It's worth investing in a type of glass that won't break when a rock hits it. Or use security film. It's a strong transparent plastic you put on your windows to strengthen them. Even if your windows break, this film will hold the shards of glass in place. It'll delay the entry by quite a bit, so they might even quit the whole thing. How much mail you've got also lets people know if you're home or not. If there's a huge pile of it, it's clear you haven't checked it for at least a couple of days. So even if your house wasn't a target, it might be now. Get familiar with your neighbors, invite them over for a cup of tea, and talk about your concerns. You'll watch their back, and they'll watch yours. And if anyone suspicious comes around, they'll let you know. You can even ask for a favor or two while you're on vacation. Ask them to park one of their cars in your driveway to pretend someone's at home. While you're at it, give them the key to your mailbox and ask them to take your letters for you. You'll repay them when they go on vacation. Take a walk around your house and put yourself in the mind of a burglar. Hmm. What would you do to get in? There's a tree there that you can climb to reach the second floor. Or maybe it's just too easy to climb the pile of junk that you've got there. It's worth getting rid of both to keep the top floors hard to reach, and no one will be tempted to break the top windows and try to get in like that. If you've got a mail slot in your front door, be aware of mailbox fishing. It's where a burglar puts a pole straight through the mail slot and fishes for keys, or maybe even tries to unlock the door. Get a mailbox cage. This way, if they try to do this, they won't get far. Valuables inside the house are another thing. Keep them out of sight as much as you can. The safest thing you can do is get a safe. But otherwise, you can get decoy items just in case burglars do get in your house. Keep a few fake gold bracelets next to your bedside table. They'll think they've scored big time when, in fact, they're going home empty-handed. If you've always wanted a pet, now's the time to get a dog. Make sure it has a cozy place to sleep outside. And as a thank you, it's going to protect your house. As soon as it hears someone step foot in the yard, it'll warn you by barking. Not only that, but it'll wake up the entire neighborhood too, which will bring even more attention to what's happening. Don't ever put up a calendar or all of this will be for nothing. Say a burglar comes out the back and just looks through the window. If they spot a calendar with the exact dates you're going to be away, none of these tricks will work because they'll know better than to fall for them. And as a last resort, you can get a panic button and keep it next to you when you sleep. You can program it to call the authorities with the press of a button. With that, you'll have alerted them that your house is being invaded. Let's crack a burglar's coat, tape on the door handle, or a slice of cheese on the car's hood, and many more can be signs that you're being watched by a crook. Burglars don't just pick a house randomly and rob it. They'll often monitor the home before they take action. They want to know more about the house and its security. They leave markings on the home, garage door, post box, or storage unit. Get to know these markings and know what they symbolize and you'll be able to better protect your home from the bad guys. If you see a circle drawn, that means in the eyes of the thieves, your house is a piece of cake to rob. Maybe it has no home security system set up. Yet, a barred circle means to avoid entry. Maybe the home has high-tech alarms, CCTV cameras, or a dog. 
Ladder-like lines means there are valuables visible in the home, so there are items in the house worth stealing. If someone sprays the letter M in the garbage, that means empty in the morning, and N refers to empty at night. Police forces have issued warnings about the code, but keep in mind that some of these signs are actually harmless messages used by road workers to communicate about pipelines and so on. If you see some evidence of key bumping, don't enter the house. Key bumping is a technique where burglars use a similar key made with a heavier metal than the pins to file down the pins on the inside of the lock. Plus, victims may encounter some problems while claiming insurance in such cases because this technique may leave no sign of forced entry on the outside of the lock. You're being robbed and you can't prove it to the insurance company. Sounds like a nightmare. Lock picking is a less forceful technique. This one will leave marks on the doorknob, such as light scratches around the lock, but the real signs will be found on the inside of the lock on the pins. They'll have dents. Heavy scrapes or marks on your doorknob can also indicate that someone has entered your home. Thieves sometimes use screwdrivers to break the pins in the lock. If you see deep scratches, marks, or a widening of the keyhole, be careful when you get inside. Thieves may stick a tape, and it's usually a see-through one, on the door handle. Suppose the tape is still there a day or so later. The squatters believe that the owner is away since the door hasn't been used. This strategy has become alarmingly prominent in Dublin. The police warned people to be vigilant and remove any tape immediately after seeing it. Some of these markings are left by dog thieves, signaling that your home has a money-wise worthy breed to steal. Supposedly, red chalk marks are for large dogs, and yellow and pink marks refer to medium and small dogs. The police advise dog owners to keep their eyes open around their properties and report any such instances to the police. Lastly, pay extra attention when walking their pets. One of the keys to being safe at a house is having good security and knowing your property. For instance, if your front door locks are still responsive but function slowly, it may be a sign of a burglar attempt. This might be because of a tactic called the vulnerability method. Thieves make the door lock weaker with time. They use tools or objects to deteriorate the lock without leaving any traces. You may think your lock is old and simply postpone calling a locksmith, but that would be a huge mistake. Similarly, the key might turn inside the lock with delay. If it's harder to turn inside, this is usually the first sign of an attempted break-in. So, this is probably the most important warning sign you should take into consideration. Even security door locks are vulnerable to break-ins. Did you know that in Churchill, Canada, locals keep their car doors unlocked? They don't do this to invite the thieves, but to survive a potential polar bear attack. The town has the largest number of polar bears in the world. Imagine a resident faced with a polar bear and another person's car is nearby. They can quickly shelter inside that car. How about learning some safety tips to avoid purse snatching? Firstly, don't carry a shoulder bag over your shoulder. I know, I know, it's what the bag is designed for. But this makes it easier for a thief to grab your bag. For example, carrying a small clutch-type handbag underneath your arm is safer. Shopping with someone else is safer than shopping alone. On shopping days, and in general, don't carry more money than you would possibly need for all your credit cards in the same purse. Carry only what you need for the day. You might think, it's just for a sec, but don't leave your purse in shopping carts or on counters. And there's the matter of scams. When you believe you can't be scammed, you might let yourself be more vulnerable to scammers. Scams target everyone from all backgrounds, ages, and incomes. They can catch you off guard and when you're not expecting it, using new technologies, products, or even services to hook you to either give them your money or personal details. How to be scam-proof? Firstly, keep in mind that if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Secondly, don't respond to calls about your computer asking for remote access, even if they mention a well-known company. Scammers will often ask you to turn on your computer to fix a problem or install a free upgrade. This is actually a virus to get your passwords and personal details. Lastly, pay attention to unusual payment requests. Scammers will often ask you to use an unusual payment method like a preloaded debit card, gift card, or iTunes card. 
a carjacker, and a slice of cheese. What connection can there be? Imagine you walk to your car and see melted cheese on the engine cap. You initially thought that it was probably some kind of a prank, so you begin to clean the cheese. Naturally, it takes ages under the hot sun. Pay attention to your surroundings. Someone might be watching you from a distance and waiting for the right time. They can just jump into your car and run away while you're not looking at the driver's door, busy cleaning the cheese near the passenger side. Did you know that you might have an extra key in your car? Some cars have valet keys hidden under the owner's manual or in the toolkit in the trunk. If your car has that spare pair, take it out immediately. If you know where it is, thieves will know it too. Plus, don't think you have a perfect hiding spot for your spare keys. Car thieves know where to look. For example, some people hide the extra key under the bumper or beneath the floor mat. Thieves routinely check those places as well. Speaking of car theft, now it might be a good time to talk about the habits and strategies of car burglars. They don't really go for wide open and visible locations like in front of houses and driveways. Dark and secluded places such as apartment buildings, carports, and underground parking garages appeal to them because it's quieter. He could hear if somebody was coming. Have you heard of vehicle identification number, aka VIN? This is a unique number for every car out there. You can engrave the VIN on your car windows. This makes your car less valuable on the black market for its parts. Plus, changing the car windows costs quite a lot, so crooks try to avoid such cars. Overall, it's better not to be an inviting, easy target. So, do you have some real-life stories about all these? If you think a deadbolt lock will stop a home intruder, don't be fooled. 60% of burglaries happen through forced entry, so these people definitely know how to get into your home, even when it's all locked up. As for 30% of home invasions, they involve an intruder just coming right in through an unlocked door or window. 65% of all burglaries happen between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., exactly when you're at work. Before executing a break-in, an experienced burglar spends days, if not weeks, casing the place. They study your schedule and daily routine so they'll know exactly when you'll be gone and for how long. They find this information out by watching you from afar or by using some other tricks of the trade. One of the most popular things burglars are doing nowadays is tying a thread on the front door handle and fixing it to the nearby wall or door frame. This thread is so thin that a casual onlooker won't even notice it. By examining the thread, burglars can figure out the pattern of your life. It may reveal to them when you leave for work, go to the gym, head out for a weekend getaway, and of course, when you come back home. With this information in hand, they can plan the perfect break-in. Experienced burglars have a checklist of easy target homes. First, you leave your doors or windows unlocked. Locking your house up seems like a no-brainer here, yet so many people don't do it. They may be lulled into a false sense of security by their tall fence or quiet neighborhood. Or perhaps they think, I'm just making a quick run to the corner store. What could possibly happen in five minutes? Believe it or not, this is more than enough time for a skilled burglar to get in, grab your valuables, and make their getaway. Your house is empty during the day. There's a common misconception that burglaries happen at night, but that's when most people are at home. This increases a burglar's risk of getting caught. It's much safer for them to operate during the day when everybody's at work or school. If you constantly share pictures and posts on social media about your expensive things or extravagant vacations, don't be surprised if one day you find some valuables missing from your home. There are certain things you can do to make yourself less of a burglary target. Nothing beats a home security system and surveillance. If a criminal notices an alarm and an operating camera, they'll most likely cross your home off their list of potential targets. Surprisingly, just a beware of dog sign can prevent burglary. It's even better if you have an actual dog, though. That tall fence and thick shrubbery that provide your home with some privacy can work against you. Sure, your neighbors can't see what you're up to in your backyard but they also won't be able to notice if some dishonest citizen invites themselves into your house while you're away. Consider opening up the area around your home so that it doesn't seem so isolated. Are you one of those people who keep their wallet and car keys in a bowl near the front door? Yes, it's really convenient to have everything right there as you're heading out. But if a burglar breaks into your house during the night, 
Nothing will be easier for them than to grab your valuables and quietly sneak away. The best place to keep your car keys and wallet at night is near your bed. Stay safe out there. As the famous song says, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Everyone's leaving their homes to go visit their families, and you are one of those people. You take a final look around your house before you head out, lock your door, and leave. But wait, I have an important warning for you. Did you know that statistically, most burglaries happen before the holidays begin? Especially on the 5th, 6th, 11th, 17th, and 18th of December. That shouldn't be too surprising though. By the end of November or the beginning of December, your house starts to fill with brand new presents. Maybe you have bought an expensive necklace for your mother, the latest tech gadget for your father, and a bike for your nephew. These make a small fortune, wouldn't you agree? I can already see the dollar signs in the burglar's eyes. Your home becomes most vulnerable in the late afternoons or early evenings after the sun sets. Burglars act quickly before you come home from work. Weekend evenings are also when the most burglaries are reported. And when you're out at parties or dinners, burglars know they can take their time since it's likely you will be out until late hours. And if you're away, then there's no escaping your faith. But there are some precautions you can take to offer fewer clues about your belongings and whereabouts to burglars. And no, they don't involve throwing fake parties with cardboard people. First things first, we always tend to place trees by the window, right? It makes everything feel cozier and there's a certain charm to displaying your wonderfully decorated tree to the people who pass by your street. Well, that's actually a big no-no if you want to keep your place safe. Also, it's not advised to keep your gifts under the tree as well as near the windows or any obvious places for days until it's finally time to open them. Because this will allow burglars to quickly locate these items of value. Seeing the tree is already set from your window might get them to start watching over your house as they wait for you to leave so they can finally break in. Whether you're going to be at home for the holidays or you're going to be away, it will always be a clever idea to put your lights on a timer. If you're going to be on the road, have them turn on during the hours you would normally be home so that your place doesn't appear empty. The timer will also come in handy if you're just going to visit a place for only a few hours. If you're not able to get a timer, you can always leave some lights on to make the house seem somehow occupied. Burglars might eventually realize that there is no one in the house since nobody would be turning them off, but it can still save you some time if you're going on a short vacation. And remember, the cost of leaving the lights on will always be lower than the cost of a break-in. On a related note, if you're one of those people who power their outdoor lights with extensions that go through the windows and connect to the inside of the house, you might want to stop doing that. Since this might prevent windows from being properly closed and secured, it will make it a lot easier for any burglar to break in. Instead, you can always use battery-operated lights. You may be inclined to post photos of your parties, dinners, and gatherings on social media to show your new dress or just how much fun you're having to your followers. But I advise you not to do that. At least wait until the event is over and you're home, because that would be declaring that your home is empty and ready for burglars to break in if anyone is targeting you. The more offline you are, the safer you and your house will be. Even if your social media accounts are set to private, sharing your location, status, and so on might still cause you trouble. Because what if the burglar is also a hacker? Having a hidden spare key outside your house comes with benefits when you forget yours at the office or drop them through the elevator holes. However, that will only make the burglar's jobs easier. Even if they don't know where they are, there's a good chance that with a quick search of the usual places people hide their keys, they will be able to find them. What you can do instead is to give them to a trusted neighbor or a friend to keep until you're back and ask them to check your house from time to time, or better, every day. And
And if you can ask that neighbor or friend if they can pick up your packages while you're away, that will add another layer of protection for your house. Some online orders or mail may not arrive on time, especially during the holidays when the delivery companies get super busy. And if they arrive when you're not home, there's a good chance that the delivery person will just leave them by your door. When the packages and letters keep building up on your porch, they will not only help burglars understand that no one's home, but they can also invite strangers to grab your boxes. To avoid this, you can track them and let your neighbors know when they will arrive. By the way, the same thing goes for any scheduled deliveries such as newspapers, magazines, or bills as well. Before you leave the house, take photos of your valuable items such as jewelry, artwork, and electronic devices, as well as record their models and serial numbers. This will not only help you stop burglars from breaking into your house in any way, but it will also come in handy if they indeed do break in and steal stuff. This way, you will know what's missing from your collection and will be able to show pictures to the police, which in return will make it easier for them to locate the stolen items. Burglars often look around to try and find a ladder, any garden equipment, or any store tool that will help them break a door or window to get inside your house. That's why you should securely lock stuff like these inside sheds or garages. Once you do that, it will become much harder for the burglars to figure out ways to break things or climb to windows. And while they do that, someone can notice their suspicious activity and make them run away without completing their crime. Even if you're living in a place with hot weather, never ever leave windows open in rooms that you're not using, even if you're at home, and make sure they're all closed tight before leaving the house. You can always use window locks and replace fly screens with security meshes. After the holiday ends, it's important that you don't pile the boxes of your expensive presents outside your house near the trash bin. If you do, the burglars will not only learn what you've received, but will also get tempted to break in. Especially if they see you have an item they want. They might also assume that you will likely replace the stolen item, and this may encourage them to break in for a second time. What you should do instead is to cut the packages before throwing them into the trash. Or you can also burn them in the fireplace to keep the house cozy and safe. Last but not least, it's always beneficial to have an intruder alarm no matter what time of year it is. And just having it is not enough. You have to remember to use it. Unfortunately, many people who have an alarm don't bother setting it unless they're going on vacation. Setting your alarm should become a habit. Make sure to use it whenever you go out as well as whenever you come in, since there's always a chance that burglars might break in while you're sleeping in your bed too. So, have you checked all the precautions off your list? Good, then happy and safe holidays. They're watching you when you're in the bedroom and when you're in the bathroom. No, I'm not talking about your three-year-old kids. Mm -mm. One of the last things you think about when going on vacation is if the room you're staying in has hidden cameras planted all over the place. For starters, look in the most obvious spots in your hotel room to see if you can find any hidden cameras. According to some experts, if you can't find anything in plain sight, then using your smartphone is enough for a basic sweep. Every camera has a lens, and all lenses reflect light. So a quick way to check for hidden cameras is to close all the curtains in the room and turn off the lights. Use your phone's flashlight to point it at potential places or objects a hidden camera might be at. One of the apparent spots is the smoke detector on the ceiling. Grab a chair and point the light straight at it and try to see if there's any red or blue light reflected. You'll have to do it slowly since the light needs to strike the lens at the correct angle for you to see a reflection. After you're done, move on to other objects like the shower head in the bathroom or an alarm clock or phone charger. Keep in mind the positions of these objects. If the charger is placed where a surveillance camera could be, then investigate it and call the reception. Even a painting in the room can be a potential nest for a hidden camera. Other objects can be lamps, a hole in the wall, or somewhere inside the closet. Another creepy place is the bathroom mirror. 
This one is tricky to spot, so you'll have to be patient when inspecting it. You can also use your phone camera to spot surveillance cameras that spy on you at night. These secret cameras emit infrared lights that the human eye can't see so that they can work at night. You'll also have to turn off all the lights and put the camera in selfie mode. The rear-facing camera on most smartphones has an infrared filter, but the front one doesn't. You can try pointing a TV remote at the front-facing camera and press on any of the buttons to see it yourself. If you see a bright red light on your screen, that means it's working. All you have to do is move your camera in the dark to see if you can find a bright light around. It'll be good to do a second sweep to make sure you didn't miss anything. Another technique you can use is turning off the Wi-Fi when you enter the hotel room. Most of the cameras are hooked up to the Wi-Fi, so they won't be functioning anymore. If you get a call from the reception saying that the Wi-Fi is down in the room, that might be a red flag. There's no reason for them to know if the Wi-Fi was purposely turned off. It could mean that the cameras are on the local Wi-Fi. When you connect to your hotel room Wi-Fi for the first time, be careful about sharing your personal data. Most networks will ask for your login credentials, such as your email. Some people can recreate a Wi-Fi login page that's identical to that of the actual hotel, which can be deceiving. You might be connecting to a Wi-Fi router, but an email is all it takes for some people to know everything about you. One of the best things you can do is download an app that shows you what devices are currently connected to the Wi-Fi that you're using. It can show what smartphone, laptop, smart TV, and in the worst case, hidden cameras are connected. A radio frequency scanner can detect a wireless camera in the room, even if it's connected to its own Wi-Fi. It might be challenging, though, because of many wireless devices overcrowding the airways. You can pick up random signals even if you turn off all your devices and any wireless emitting signals. Intrusion into your personal life can go so far as someone tapping your mobile phone or landline to listen to your conversations. One way of eavesdropping on people's conversations is installing a microphone to a line that sends the audio wirelessly to a recorder from a remote transmitter. Almost anyone can get their hands on such equipment since it's not too expensive to buy and is available in many shops and online. If you notice strange sounds while talking on the phone, like clicking, distant voices, or that sound similar to an old record playing, then chances are someone is listening to your phone calls. These sounds aren't typical for a regular modern cell phone. Most bugging software runs in the background of your phone without you knowing, which drains the battery. There can be many explanations for why your phone battery keeps draining, but some software living on your phone, viruses, and malware will likely be the reason. You can also look out for unusual phone activity when you're not using your gadget. If your notifications keep popping up and you muted them, then maybe your phone is being bugged. In that case, they do not only have access to your phone calls, but your actual phone. They can fish out any picture, video, file, and information you have without you knowing it. If you try powering off your phone and it takes way longer than usual, it can be another sign of someone tracking your phone. For the phone to completely shut down, it needs to log out of all the tasks and activities properly. If your phone is transferring data to someone remotely, it might be the reason for the delay in shutting down. One of the biggest red flags is if you receive text messages that have random symbols and numbers. The ones who tap your phone use some illegal software, which sometimes requires them to receive secret codes. Make sure the text messages aren't something you subscribe to. Otherwise, contact someone who can help. If you scroll through your apps and notice something that shouldn't be there, or something that looks fishy, the app could be a disguise for a spying app. Also, check for weird history in your browsers for stuff you didn't search. You might notice your phone turning on and off randomly without you touching your phone. And worst of all, they can turn on your phone camera anytime they want without you knowing. If you feel like your phone is tampered with, then you have to factory reset everything. It wipes out all the data, including files, settings, and apps. The same risks apply to your laptop. Every now and then, we all click on something that seems legit, even though it acts as an access point for spyware to enter our computer software. Draining battery, overheating, and weird activity are telltale signs of your PC being infected. GPS trackers are the most common ways to track someone's vehicle. 
It's pretty simple to get the job done, but it's very difficult to find the trackers since they're usually planted deep inside the car. If you ever get the spooky feeling that someone could be watching you while you drive, or coincidentally see the same person everywhere you drive your car, then start searching for that tracker. The most common places are underneath the car or near the back wheels. But the person tracking your car is smart and knows what they're doing. They're not going to let you find it that easily. If you find nothing on the outside of your vehicle, then try looking on the inside. If you find something there, it's a clear sign the person tracking you broke into your car and planted the tracking device. Or it could be someone you know who took a ride with you once and slipped it in without you knowing. Check behind the dashboard and within your car's electronics to be sure. Instead of ripping your car apart to find the tracker, you can buy a GPS bug detector. They work by finding electronic frequencies in your car's proximity. They won't block it from tracking you down, but they'll help you find it. Before using it, turn off your smartphone or put it in airplane mode. This way, the frequencies won't intercept with the tracking device. And if you feel like this isn't working, try parking your car in a remote area where nothing is in sight. Even a remote garage would do. Well, anyone else feeling a little paranoid? Let's see some hands. You've probably heard that when a burglar decides which house to target, they start by casing it. This means that they watch the owners, find out information about their routine, and determine the best time for entering their home. By the time they're ready to commit the crime, they already know for sure when there won't be anybody inside or when the owners will be distracted. One of the tricks thieves use to gather information about your routine is so simple that you may not even give it a second thought. But the next time you hear a quiet crackle under the sole of your shoe, stop and check what it was. The chances are high that you'll find yourself face-to-face -face with a crushed cookie. If that's the case, it's your clue that something has gone terribly wrong. The thing is, this is a rather effective tool criminals use to find out if you've left on a trip or when exactly you come home in the evening. A cookie is such an innocent object that people don't usually give it much thought, if they even notice it at all. You arrive home, step on the cookie, make it crumble, and automatically reveal all your secrets to burglars. They know for sure if the house is lived in and can also figure out the schedule of its owners. Things get even worse if you're away from home. The cookie under the doormat remains whole, thus alerting criminals that the house is perfect for a break-in. So, if you find some treats under your doormat, that's pretty bad news. Someone is interested in your house and watching it. It might be a good idea to notify the police or take some safety measures. Now, the ploy with a cookie is just one of the numerous tricks used by burglars. One more sign that can alert you to the fact that you're being watched is white pebbles left near the house or in the driveway. This means that a criminal has already visited your home and marked it as worth entering. Another reason why thieves may have left the pebbles is to indicate that your house stays empty during the day. So, if you're walking along the street and notice a USB flash drive sticking out of a curb or a wall, don't get confused. You have most likely stumbled across a dead drop. Despite its ominous name, this is a global art project that has borrowed some tricks from the world of spies and espionage. Lots of people who know about this project are happy to be able to put on their black coat and dark sunglasses and go to swap confidential information with others. The thing is that many decades ago, spies had their own ways to exchange secret materials. There was a live drop when spies met in person, but this was often extremely dangerous. That's why a dead drop system was invented. In this case, some loose bricks in a wall in an alleyway hid important documents that had to be picked up later. Nowadays, there are more than 1,500 dead drops all over the world. And the accumulated data on these flash drives reaches 10 terabytes. You can come across a dead drop on any continent you visit, except Antarctica, maybe because there are not so many walls there. So, if you find one, what do you do with it? First of all, it's highly inadvisable to connect random USB flash drives to your computer. You never know what viruses are lurking there, looking forward to destroying your hard drive content. And while risk is a part of the game, don't overdo it. If you're 100% sure that you want to play, secure your computer as well as you can, or even better. Secondly, you can't even guess what information will be waiting for you on a flash drive. 
anyone can download videos, photos, or text files, and this has already led to several problems. Speaking of which, have you got a parcel with a USB stick in it? Whatever you decide to do with it, don't plug the flash drive in. Such cases have been more and more frequent in Australia. The police warn people that hackers have invented a new tactic. They drop unmarked memory sticks to letterboxes. It'll probably come as no surprise that these devices contain malware able to mess up your computer. They evidently rely on human curiosity and, in all honesty, it pays off. People can't fight an inexplicable desire to check the contents of a mysterious gift. As a result, almost half of USB sticks received by post get plugged in. After that, people start having serious problems with their laptops and computers. For example, fraudulent media begins to stream service offers, or computer viruses harm files and programs on a PC. So, no touching the free flash drive, okay? Now, you leave a shopping mall, your office, an airport, and go to the parking lot to find your car. You unlock it and put the key in the ignition. When you're about to start your vehicle and drive away, you see something strange on your windshield. Is that a $100 bill wrapped around your wiper? Oh, you could certainly find a way to spend this unexpected gift. But do you really think someone accidentally put money on your windshield and forgot all about it? Beware, this is nothing but a ruse. Because as soon as you get out of your car to get a closer look at this mysterious banknote, the owner of the banknote will take action. They will get into your car and drive off at a record-breaking speed. Let's admit that no one would turn off their ignition and take their belongings with them if they got out of their car to check the windshield for a C-note. As a result, in under a minute, you'll lose your car, your wallet, and your documents, and you'll be left stranded in the parking lot. People have recently started to find some article of clothing, like a shirt for instance, lying on their windshield or wrapped up in their wipers. If you ever happen to be one of these people, don't fall into this trap and don't try to remove the object. Just get in your car and drive away as fast as you can from the place you were parked. This seemingly misplaced garment is actually a new con being used by muggers and thieves. It works like this. If you see some random piece of clothing that prevents your wipers from moving or obscures your view, your first reaction will be to remove it, of course. But while you're distracted untying it or trying to get it off, the criminal has plenty of time to jump you. The most common place for this sort of scam is parking garages. They're usually badly lit and pretty deserted, which means there are few witnesses around and plenty of dark spaces for the attacker to lie in wait. Now, if one day you come home and notice some graffiti or markings on your door or house, call the police immediately. Even if it just looks like a teenage prank or a simple scratch, it's better to be safe than sorry, because burglars use certain marks to tell other criminals different things about your house. For example, something resembling a Roman numeral 2 means that the homeowners are rich, so the place is a great target. On the other hand, a crossed circle tells other burglars that there's nothing valuable to take from the house. Hmm, kind of makes you want to mark your own house like that. Now, a long horizontal rectangle divided into four parts means the place has a big aggressive guard dog. A triangle divided into two parts by a vertical line tells criminals to hit the place only at night, while a reversed one says that a house or apartment is free after dinner. And something looking like a combined A and K lets their fellow burglars know that the house is always full of people. Hey, did you know there's even a fraternity for burglars who love to steal desserts named Iota Grab a Pie? <laughs> Sorry I made that up. A new trick being used by car thieves, and that's the trick with a coin. They slip it into the space between the door and the door handle. When a car owner thinks they've locked the door with a remote, the vehicle is, in fact, still open. The coin prevents the lock on one of the doors from working. As soon as the owner walks away from the car, the thief has no problems at all opening the door and driving away. Another trick. As soon as there's some public gathering, a big party, or even a busy day at the mall, car thieves make an announcement over the PA system that a particular car, chosen by them of course, has blocked their vehicle in and they can't leave. As soon as the owner comes out to move his car, a group of guys start to act. They assume, and for good reason, that the person is carrying the key to his car. Psst. Hey, do you ever get the feeling that you're being watched? 
Well, it's easy to set up hidden cameras all around, but it's not easy to find them. You can be out in public, and surveillance cameras will be pointed in every direction. Let's see who is watching you right now. You're walking down the street, ready to cross the road and meet your friend for a cup of joe. How many cameras are watching you? Let's start counting. For starters, street cameras are surveilling everyone around, especially near buildings. The symbol turns green and you cross the street. You pass by an ATM to collect some cash and meet your friend sitting inside by the counter. You may have missed the camera right on top of the traffic light to catch anyone crossing illegally. Next, the ATM machine has its camera, along with two more on top near the bank's entrance. Then, you have one outside the coffee shop, and at least two inside, especially near the counter. How many cameras did you count? You're parking your car in the underground parking, and going into the mall to buy a gift for your friend. How many cameras do you think are here? First of all, you have the cameras pointed at you from above. After driving, you park to get an entry ticket, and you have a camera at the bottom pointing at your license plate number just in case something happens. Dozens of cameras are placed on each floor. Finally, you park your car and get in the elevator to the store floor. No surprise here, the elevator camera. You walk through the mall and see more cameras above the stores. You enter the store and see at least three cameras. Let's not forget the couple taking selfies. Now, let's look in your pocket. Aha! You carry a camera with you all the time. We know instantly to snap a cool pic or record a video whenever we want. However, some people can gain forceful access to your phone remotely. By doing so, they can do almost whatever they want with your phone, including turning on your phone camera and going through your gallery. Now don't worry, such things only happen to very high-profile people who are considered targets. If they have your phone number, then all they have to do is miscall you, and they're in. Besides accessing your camera and gallery, they can see your contacts, accounts, and passwords, and read all your messages even if they're encrypted. Encryption is the form of scrambling text so that no one can know what your original message is. Most chatting apps have so-called end-to-end encryption, which allows a message to be flown from the sender and received in plain text to the end receiver. Along the way, the message can't be seen by the messaging app company or by your internet service provider. If one of these programs latches onto your phone, they can see your phone in messages just like you would be seeing them. It doesn't intercept your traffic, but rather it mirrors your phone. It shows what you're typing on your keyboard, which means it knows every password you type on your phone. This software can cost millions of dollars to execute and is only used by top officials. It's practically inaccessible to any regular people. You're in the front yard of your house, from your doorstep all the way to the tree near the trash can. There are tons of places to install a hidden camera. Here's a speed run, the front door, the chair on the porch, on top of your dog's house. Ah, who's a good boy? The treetop, the little rock by the entrance of your house, inside that garden gnome, and on the ceiling of your porch. You're driving along the countryside in a long stretch of greenery. There's no one around you. You decide to stop by a cliffside and enjoy the sunset before it gets too dark. There's no one in sight. You'd be happy to know that no cameras are watching you, except for one. Can you guess where it is? Nope, it's not in your car. It's invisible. Well, no, actually, it's all the way up in the sky. Satellites. There are satellites capturing details of all corners of the Earth. They can't catch your car or any details, but they're watching, always watching. What's weird about this room? I know you paused it for a closer look, but the answer is nothing. Nothing is off about it or indicates that hidden cameras might be strategically placed. But let's zoom in for a bit. Closer. Yeah, that's just a wall. That little black hole that looks like dirt is actually a lens. These cameras are drilled into the walls and aren't placed at eye level. Zoom back out at this wall. 
there are plenty of elements around, like a bookcase, a wall clock, and a lamp. You might just see them as random everyday objects, but others will look at them as an opportunity to play some hidden cameras. On a bookshelf, you can easily find a perfect position to put the camera since it's one of the most cluttered places on the wall. There are some hollow books for sale, where one can just slip the camera inside and drill a hole for the lens. And boom, you will not even know or suspect anything. Some paintings can host a hidden camera, especially if the camera is bulky enough. You may suspect a hidden camera, especially if it's a cheap painting. People can easily camouflage the lens and position it strategically. Wall clocks are easy to place a hidden camera. In fact, any clock is good enough to nestle a device. It will require some work, but it can be done. The easiest thing is that here, people don't have to drill anything. And this goes for other types of clocks, like alarm clocks and digital clocks. Now, let's check out this living room. Looks cozy from a starting point, but at least five hidden cameras are deliberately placed in certain spots. Why would a tissue box be placed on a coffee table? I mean, it's convenient there, but look at how it's positioned. The downside is that people will interact with it and might ruin the camera. This flower pot in the corner is all by itself for a reason. Behind the thick leaves is a camera with an excellent wide angle to capture the whole room. <laughs> camera number three is next to your TV stand. Pay attention to the logo. It's disguised by the infrared red light that shows when your TV is on. Camera number four is drilled inside the coat hanger. During the summer, no one will have to hang anything there, so we can place a camera in the least obvious place in the room. The final camera is right in front of you, the front door. Most of the cameras look outward to see who's coming in. In this case, we have a camera pointing in both directions. These cameras capture real-time footage that can be seen on any smartphone or tablet. And the crazy part is that you can view them from almost anywhere in the world. You don't have to be in the same country to watch the camera footage of your house. Some of these cameras are so sophisticated that they don't record anything if nothing is moving. In other words, a motion detector. This technology isn't new, but the fact that it exists is quite shocking. If you ever catch yourself being filmed by a hidden camera, it might already be too late to do anything. For the most part, the cameras live stream the footage, which means you can't even do anything about it. It's not safe for you to recover. It's actively being viewed by who knows how many people. So what are the signs if someone tracks your phone? Do you know how to tell if your phone's listening to your conversations? Here are some tips on how to deal with such malicious activities. Imagine you open a tab on your phone's browser, or you're chatting with your significant other without knowing that a stranger is monitoring the whole convo. How would you feel? The attacker, yeah, let's call him this, may see what you browse and whom you connect with. Yet they may not be able to see your messages. It depends on the way they choose to track you. If you install an app from a third-party app store, your privacy is in danger. You might do that without knowing that the app is harmful. Secondly, sharing your credentials through a phishing scam campaign is a possibility. Lastly, if your device's software has been out of date for a long time, like a year or so, it's more open to attacks. Now, what are the signs that your smartphone is tracked? The first clue is excessive background data usage. Keep an eye on it. If it's noticeably higher than what you usually use, investigate what's using most of the data. Is there an active hotspot enabled? Verify the connected devices and look out for an unauthorized one. The second clue is browser history. Sometimes attackers load up things like phishing sites remotely. If you see a mismatch in your browser history, well, that's a bad sign. The third symptom is battery drain. Yes, there was a time when phone batteries didn't last long enough. But in recent models, they can go up to days. If your device normally goes for quite a long time, but you get a sudden battery drain, you need to verify the background apps and installations. The last common symptom is abnormal reboot. Of course, it can be related to a hardware issue, but why should you risk it? 
you can consult an expert to determine whether the reboot is related to the hardware or malicious software that has been downloaded. The million dollar question, how to stay tracking free and safe? You can buy an anti-tracking signal blocker. This model on Amazon can also be used as a wallet. The phone will be disconnected and the GPS signal will be deactivated. It'll prevent tracking. Credit cards and IC magnetism will be safe in this bag too. And lastly, it has an anti-radiation feature. Okay, this model may seem a little extreme because, well, most of the time, you want to be accessible and use your phone. After all, you can't keep it inside a signal blocker case forever. So, here are easy tips you can easily apply to protect your privacy. First, uninstall unfamiliar applications. Wait a minute, I don't even know what that is. Well, hit delete. As I mentioned earlier, hackers generally track you through apps. You can also enforce application blacklisting. To avoid harmful side effects, always download apps from official app stores. Sadly, dubious ones can sneak into Google Play and the App Store, but the number is certainly less than a not-trustworthy option. Another way to guard your phone is by creating strong passwords. And if you enable two-factor authentication for important accounts, that helps too. Similarly, a strong PIN would help, as people sometimes can't install spyware if your device is properly locked. You can use a reliable security system to strengthen the security even more. I know how tempting public Wi-Fi is instead of using your own data, especially if you're in another country for vacation or other purposes. Unfortunately, if the Wi-Fi isn't password protected, it's risky to connect to it. Hackers commonly use public Wi-Fi. They perform cyber attacks and steal sensitive data. If you're still suspicious that someone is tracking you, factory reset your phone. This is the most effective thing you can do. Sometimes, even though you delete the apps, a harmful file can be left. But hey, back up all your important data first before resetting the device. Don't tell me I didn't warn you if your dog's cute video got deleted for good. Now, we mentioned how to avoid tracking. Yet, in some situations, you want to track your own phone. Literally, you physically want to locate it. Although there are products put out by smartphone companies, there are numerous cheaper finder options on Amazon. This one here is easy to connect and has a ring for you to easily find your phone or other stuff like keys. Now let's say you mention this smart Bluetooth tracker to your friend in a conversation at a cafe. After some time, you will come across all types of key finder ads on your Instagram. Is it a coincidence or is your phone listening to you? Long story short, it's true our phones do listen to us. Virtual assistants like Siri or Alexa listen to your voice all the time. It makes sense on paper. The assistant has to always listen to you so it can hear your command. Yet things aren't that simple. In 2019, a report found out that Siri sometimes mistakenly activates and records things. Some of these recordings are about private matters, too. It's said that Apple randomly selects small durations of conversations in order to make Siri analyze them. Then they see how to improve the service quality. It's not specific to Apple. Nearly all voice assistant systems work this way. But why do we see ads? Well, in simple terms, think of voice assistants as search engines. If you're looking for something and searching for it, you'll see ads related to it later. Now, if you feel unsafe and want to make your phone stop listening to you, there are a couple of things you can do. First, replace your smartphone with a pigeon to communicate. Now, the biggest problem with that, as I see it, is that you have to feed the pigeon and pay for the dry cleaning of your recipients. Okay, I'm kidding. Your phone listens to you through its microphone. You can disable Siri and its equivalents. After disabling voice assistance, go over to the apps you granted access to the mic. If an app asks you too many things to grant access, question it before blindly saying yes. Does a clothing app really need access to the microphone? I don't think so. Lastly, you can consider using a VPN to encrypt your manual browsing activity too. So, is it legal for phones to listen to you? The answer lies in the small box we tick about terms and conditions. We give them our consent and allow our data to be collected, trusting them not to use or sell it in illegal ways. Did you know that Apple CEO Tim Cook once said, 
there's more information about you on an iPhone than in your home. Prepare to be amazed or frightened about how much your phone knows about you. Companies collect data on your movements and location that's known, but they can also record your friends' locations too. Let's take Apple's Find My Friends as an example. I know it's super useful to find one another in a busy place, but when you use this feature, your phone quickly builds up data about where you have been, how much time you spent, and who you met there. Your phone can even understand your mood. Sometimes you do it willingly with a post or tweet. But background data tracked by the smartphone itself also has a pretty accurate ideas of how you feel. A study was made using a combination of phone sensors to figure out when someone was feeling depressed or manic. The study was conducted for four months. Researchers gave smartphones to 12 patients and told them to use them as their primary devices. The results were interesting. Researchers revealed that the device's activity and location data predict the patient's mood changes with 94% accuracy. Another crucial thing is your passwords. You don't have to memorize all the passwords because your phone or Google account remembers them for you. I know how convenient it is. If we think of the worst with saved account passwords, they will be available to anyone who gets into your phone. Your phone knows how often, when, and why you pick it up. Your sleep cycle, exercise routines, the list can stretch like mozzarella on a pizza. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go and check my phone to see how safe I am. Mission safety is going to be accomplished soon. You park your car in a dark alley, lock it, and leave it for just a couple of minutes to go grab a coffee. When you come back, your beloved vehicle is no longer there. A siren sounds. Oh wait, that was the alarm. Phew! Luckily, that was all just a dream, and you can help it to never come true. First of all, you can install a steering wheel lock in your car. It can either be a long metal rod stretched over the steering wheel or a chain lock connected to the seatbelt buckle. Both options are good to slow down the bad guys that might break into your vehicle. But don't make it 100% thief-proof. The thieves can just cut the steering wheel or even the lock, so you need to add some extra layers of protection to be sure. Criminals like to use gadgets that catch signals and help them steal cars without a key. For example, if the car is parked in a garage of a private house or under the windows of a multi-story building, the keys are accessible through the radio device. Thieves can easily intercept the signal and the owners of the car won't notice anything. To protect your keys from relay attacks when they're stored at home, use something metallic. You can simply wrap the keys in foil to block the radio signals or keep them in a safe metal box. Park in areas that are well lit and have security cameras. Building entrances and parking lots are your best choice. An isolated garage isn't always the best idea because it could put you personally at risk. So if you do park in one of those, stay close to the attendant or where security cameras can see you. Keep the wheels turned towards the curb whenever you park. It will make it way harder for thieves to try to tow the auto with a tow truck. To steal a car, a criminal will have to make some extra maneuvers. It takes time and effort and can demotivate the bad guys. In many cases, it's not your car the bad guys are after. It's that shiny new laptop you dropped in the front seat or your designer purse that looks like it's stuffed with valuables. Things like that are hard to resist and often lead to a break-in. So take an extra moment to hide your belongings in the trunk and your vehicle will be less tempting for criminals. Don't just jump out of the car, even if it's literally for a moment to buy something. If you need to get out, Always stop the engine first, close the windows, and lock the doors. Storing your vehicle registration in the car is a good way to make the lives of thieves easier. They can present it to police officers in case they get pulled over. Your insurance information and VIN can help them get new keys to unlock the car no problem. If you aren't the only person using the car, Find some secret place to hide the registration and only tell the people you trust 100% about it. You can also take a photo of your title registration and insurance information and store them on your smartphone. 
Another option is to make copies of those important docs and keep them with you. Mark your windshields, windows, and mirrors with a VIN number, which is the identification number of the vehicle. This service won't cost you a lot, but will demotivate the bad guys. They'll have to spend money to change the marked glass, and they will think twice if they want to invest in your vehicle. You can also play spy and leave marks on different parts of the car with an invisible pen or cover it in micro dots with your ID details. This won't stop thieves, but it will make it easier to track the vehicle if it gets stolen. If you know that you'll have to leave the car somewhere new and you don't feel like it's a safe place, hide an old switched on phone or tablet in it. Make sure you have a way to track it. Then, the Find My Phone feature will help you locate the phone and the car in a matter of seconds. You can either get a cheap data plan for real-time tracking or rely on GPS. It should work even without a SIM card. Protect your side mirrors from thieves with special covers. You can find models that come with locks made from anti-cut materials. The cover will also protect your side mirrors from scratches and scruffs and extend their lifespan. Plus, you can go creative and choose covers with your favorite team's logo or something else that's important to you. Not a bad idea to customize your vehicle on a budget, right? Car thieves use different schemes to distract your attention. A piece of paper stuck to the rear view window, a plastic bottle over the wheel, or a shirt on the trunk of your car. These and other small things will likely get you out of the car. The bad guys can also pretend to be nice and helpful and to tell you to pull over because there's something under your car. The idea here is, again, to get you out of your car and let them steal it. So instead of going out, close the windows, lock the car doors, and don't go out if there's someone suspicious hanging around. Criminals aren't the only bad guys who can do your vehicle harm. Harsh winter weather can be a problem too. If you don't want to find your wipers stuck to the windshield and scrape them off every morning, leave them up when you're not driving. You probably heard it's a bad idea because it ruins the arm spring and can tempt someone to steal your wipers. Don't worry, the springs don't lose their elasticity and there aren't really many people who are after your wiper blades. In case you forget to put the wipers up and find them safely stuck to your windshield, try running the AC. Cold air will defrost the windows just like warm air. It works by dehumidifying the air. If your lock is frozen and you can't get inside your own car, treat it with some hand sanitizer. That substance can melt the ice without a problem. To prevent your windshield from getting frosty, Mix three parts vinegar and one part water and spray that solution on the windows overnight. It'll save you some scraping time in the morning. Always keep your gas tank more than half full in cold weather. Moist air will be happy to fill any empty space above the fuel in your tank. And that air will condense to water in the cold. Water is denser than gasoline so it settles at the bottom of your tank. When enough of it accumulates, it'll go through the fuel line to the engine, and that's not really good. To protect your favorite car from rust, wash your vehicle regularly. Something as simple as that can be the difference because dirt damages the protective layer of clear coat and paint and makes it easier for rust to sneak in. Don't forget to wash the undercarriage of the car and the wheel wells. Make sure the car paint isn't chipping or peeling. You need that layer to protect your vehicle from the elements. In the cold season, salt from the road can also cause some rust spots. To avoid that, you should at least rinse the car every week, even in the winter. And don't forget to wax it at least twice a year. That's another good way to keep your paint looking good as new and protect it from UV rays. One more thing is to keep the inside of the car clean. If you spill something inside, always mop up the liquid. You don't want it to seep further and hit the metal parts. This is exactly how rust forms. 
Did you know that most break-ins take place in the middle of the day? The FBI says burglaries happen midday because people are outside the house. Don't let your home be an easy mark for theft. Here are 10 tips to protect your home and some security items you might need along the way. Number one on our list is portable door locks. They aren't just designed for regular houses. Let's say you stay in a rented house where other guests also come and go. You can carry one of these portable locks with you. Many rooms have secondary locking mechanisms besides the regular lock, like security chains attached to the door, but you shouldn't always rely on them. These mechanisms are only held by screws. It means they're easy to dislocate. There are many portable lock models, so what should you look for? Ease of use is the key for installation and removal in case of emergency. Most inward swing doors are suitable for these items. Adalock is a good example. You can find it on Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive, has a versatile design, and most importantly, comes in one piece. It takes seconds to upgrade your safety. You insert the claws into the door strike plate and then close the door. It'll be held in position with a handle. There you go. Burglars don't hang out in your house or bother stealing heavy stuff like TVs. They want to get in and out in under 10 minutes. What you should do is take some precautions to slow them down. Laminated glass is great for this. You should consider investing in it. Normal windows that are made with tempered glass can shatter easily, but laminated windows are like shields. They can crack but not break apart. Instead of making smashing noises and grabbing attention, the burglar will probably leave. The structure of laminated glass is different from the regular one. It holds the piece intact even after a strong impact. Laminated glass windows are 100 times stiffer and 5 times more durable than standard. What makes these types of glass so special? Firstly, it's made with layers. There are two layers of glass and there's a vinyl material in between that helps keep the two layers intact. As a bonus, laminated ones have a soundproofing feature. Two birds with one stone. The interlayer absorbs some of the outside noise. It's glass after all. Aren't we going to see the vinyl layer? That might be the question that popped into your head. Nope, laminated glass is transparent just like other types. Enjoy the crystal clear views while staying safe. I would say, but unfortunately, it's expensive to get these specifically manufactured burglar deterring glasses. You can have professionals install a laminate film onto your standard windows, or you can even buy security film. They all work according to the same principle, but obviously these alternatives cannot be as strong as the laminated glass itself. The next few tips come from an ex-burglar, Michael Fraser. Now he's giving bits of advice on how to protect from theft. His first tip is quite interesting. Don't put a beware of the dog sticker if you have a dog. If a dog can walk around the house without triggering the alarm, so can a human. This is the way burglars think. Plus, many dogs get friendly in a short time unless they're specifically trained to catch strangers. Otherwise, they can easily be put in a room and, well, you know the rest. Bye-bye to precious items. Advertising your house for sale online is a standard procedure to attract potential buyers, but also thieves. With your innocent picks, burglars can have floor plans with virtual tours. They can easily spot the entry and escape routes. Sounds like a perfect plan to rob a house. Number five is buying a home security system. It helps prevent thefts and notifies you if that happens. According to the data, homes without a security system are almost three times more vulnerable to break-ins. There are numerous ones to choose from. Some are pricey, but luckily there are affordable options too. You don't even have to call professionals. This do-it-yourself security system from Amazon is an example of a budget-friendly gadget with useful features. These types of devices are designed to be easy to install. You'll be guided through an app for the software and for the product itself. 
bonus, you won't have to deal with screws, tools, or drilling. They have fast emergency dispatch that can notify the authorities if you say so. Since it's easy to set up, it's perfect for short-term residents too. Remember I mentioned that if a dog can walk in the house, so can a thief? Well, technology is not in favor of thieves. These types of devices can now detect intruders and be friends with your pet. The sensors can be put in the window, doors, and corners, but still be adjusted to avoid fake alarms by the pets. Another device to add a layer of protection to you, especially in shared residences like dorms, is a doorstop alarm. These devices are very compact, so you can put them in your luggage and take them on your dream vacation. You can use it in your daily life. A doorstop alarm can be used on any door as long as you place it inside. It works as a door wedge, but it keeps the door closed. How does it work? When the alarm is triggered, it will keep the intruder outside the door and activate a noise alarm. It can wake the owner of the house or neighbors. This one, again, can be easily found on Amazon. Ex-Burglar Michael also recommends thinking like a thief. Ask yourself, how would I get in? It's a great starting exercise for discovering vulnerable spots. Walk around your home. Is there a window that can be easily opened? Oh wait, is it your laptop on the desk that can be seen from the street? Speaking of the street, if you buy a new electronic device like a TV or a computer, don't leave the empty cartons displayed near the trash container. This looks like an invitation to thieves. They will know that you have expensive electronics inside the house. Instead, break down the cardboard boxes and then put them away for recycling. Unfortunately, first floor windows are entry points in 23% of home break-ins. To prevent this, you can purchase a wireless alarm kit. When it comes to the front door, installing a double key deadbolt can be a solution. Similarly, motion sensor lighting does the job. Do you have blind spots around your home? Upgrade to a security camera with night vision. If you want to see what's happening inside your house rather than outside, you can get one of these cool security gadgets. Orbi Robotic Mobile Sphere is like a ball, but it has a camera inserted in it. It doesn't have a limited view. Imagine you're at the office and want to play with your dog. Your four-pod best friend can chase the ball at home while you're away controlling the device. Ah, okay, we're here to save your house from burglars, so I'll leave fun pet toys for another video. Here is a shocking truth about fences. Most people believe that fences are like guardians protecting their property. Sorry to break it to you, but even tall and solid ones aren't as secure as you believe. The number one rule of a thief is not to be caught. And if they broke into a house with fences at night, they'd be perfectly covered. Your neighbors can't see who that person is. You know, unless they have x-ray vision. The fences should be hard to climb. One of the points of having a fence is privacy. But I'm just saying metal, wire, and picket fences are harder for intruders to fly in. So, we cracked the burglar's code. Implementing the tips on our list might help you discourage and prevent burglary and keep you safe. Did you experience such unpleasant incidents? If so, do you have any other tips for fellow brightsiders to watch out for? Oops, another burglary in the US has just occurred. Wait another 22.6 seconds and there will be another one. Hey, no need to worry about your property. Forewarned, forearmed. Let's explore a few tips on how to protect your house. A mere sticker can contribute a lot to your house's safety. For instance, you can use a sticker that says you have a home security system, even if in reality you don't. It may not sound convincing enough, but still, burglars prefer not to mess with such houses. Just one more tip here, make sure the sticker looks true to life, so a makeshift sign won't do. It's better to fork out some money and grab a real looking sticker. Another smart trick is to leave a pair of really large shoes on the porch so that the burglars could clearly see them. It will make them think someone big and dangerous lives there and they won't fancy meeting them. Right, now let's inspect your door. I hope you don't leave the keys under the doormat. The only things you can leave under the mat are the cookies or chips. 
This is a fun way to see if someone was visiting you while you were away. However, the trick doesn't give you a 100% guarantee. It might be a mailman, a delivery guy who got the wrong door, or even a random dog hanging around your porch. Yeah, cookies feel better in your stomach, not under the doormat. Okay, you're back home from work. It was a tough day and you're tired. You leave the keys in the keyhole and completely forget about it. Right, the main thing is that you've locked the door and the keys are inside. But who said there is no burglar in the bushes targeting your house? Technically, it might be impossible to insert a dupe and get in if there's a key in the keyhole. But these guys are well equipped and have a whole assortment of hooks to lure the key out. You know what happens next? They can seep into your house as silently as ninjas and grab all your valuables while you're peacefully sleeping. A lock that can only be closed from the inside and can't be opened from the outside seems like a good solution. When moving to a new place, even if you didn't buy it but rent it, make sure to change the locks. Who knows how many copies of those keys there are? As for renting, you never know who lived there before you moved in. Also, if for some reason you accidentally left your keys in the front door for some time, the best thing to do is to change the lock. Yeah, probably nothing bad will happen, but still, it's better to play it safe. Plus, not only should you stop leaving the keys in the door, but you also shouldn't leave them on display. Maybe it's better to bring the keys to the living room instead of keeping them near the front door. Sometimes, burglars can use not only your door, but your window too. Mind your trash, especially if you throw away some pricey stuff packaging. Don't let the thieves know what you purchased and how much you paid for it. Also, your trash may contain some essential information about your personal data, credit card details, and so much more. Keep an eye on your mailbox. Make sure you have a lock on it. Thing is, burglars may be quite interested in your mail contents, so the secret is simple. Keep the mailbox locked and make sure you shred any personal data related papers. Now let's inspect your front lawn. Hey, I can see something compromising. I'm talking about these large bushes. Yeah, I know you don't have time to trim them. The larger they get, the more space there is for the burglars to hide. Plus, if someone sees untrimmed shrubs and trees in the front yard, they might think nobody's home. You see the point, right? Okay, let's say you ignored all the previous tips and burglars broke into your house. The most interesting thing for them is surely cash. If you don't have any cash at home, you can skip this tip. But if you have valuables, get creative. Cash can be stuffed into a plastic bag and hidden in a large container with some leftovers. Also, you can place that plastic bag into an old detergent bottle you keep in the storeroom or the kitchen. Burglars aren't likely to look for your stash there. A couple of don'ts here. Hiding cash or jewels in a prescription pills container isn't that smart. And yeah, a freezer isn't the best option either. Many burglars like to check it in the first place. Time to see if you keep your keys right. If you keep your car and house keys together, you might want to reconsider it. First off, imagine you lose them and burglars somehow know where you live. Not only will they grab what they want, but they'll also have a vehicle to transport all your hard-earned belongings. Keep an eye on your garage keys, especially if it's possible to sneak into your house through your garage. Even if it isn't, who said there are no valuables in the garage? However, there are no limits whatsoever for burglars. They can sneak into houses even through small windows. The reason why they prefer doors is that it's the safest way. While squeezing through the window can get scratches, and it's not that they don't want to spoil their looks. The thing is, if they leave their DNA, they can be traced. However, crooks are careful about not leaving their traces. For instance, a report from England claims only about 3% of burglars leave forensic evidence. To protect yourself at night, there are several options. Number one, insert a large paper clip or a bobby pin inside the keyhole. You can use a spare pair of keys if you have them. This way, you'll make it extremely hard, if not impossible, for the burglars to use the key dupes. Number two, 
barricading is an option. It can be a heavy chair, a bookshelf, you name it. I mean, why not if it makes you feel safe? If your door opens outwardly, a jammer could do a great job for you. A chair can be super handy. Secure it under the doorknob. It's not the most powerful security system, but at least it does its job. Binding the doorknobs or handles together can be an option too. A dummy security camera can protect you during the day and night. Again, burglars are not as fearless as they may seem. If you have a real CCTV, make sure the crooks don't deactivate it. So place it in some hard to get place. If you're ready to fork out some money for protection, then the motion sensor light is exactly what you need. Crooks like dim spots, and once they approach your place, they'll be frightened off by the bright light. This solution works as long as the burglars know you're home. In case they're sure you're away, it's way less efficient. TV and radio timers are another trick. With their help, you can imitate your home even if you're not. A perfect match for the motion sensor light. This trick can help outsmart some burglars, but again, it doesn't give a 100% guarantee. Some of them aren't afraid to break in, even if the TV's on. What about live alarm systems? This can be real or fake too. I'm talking about dogs. Remember the trick with the boots? You can do the same with a dog if you don't have one. Leave a large bowl on the porch, but make sure it all looks real. I mean, the bowl should not look untouched and brand new. Hey, do you know all your neighbors? If not, it's high time you baked some cookies and visited them to know them better. First, the crooks don't really like to operate in areas where few people know each other and care for each other. This way, their chances of being spotted and reported are extremely high. So, a sort of neighborhood watch is a perfect way to protect your house. And who knows? Find new friends. Burglaries are on the rise in your neighborhood, and you have concerns about whether your house might be vulnerable. You have no surveillance system, so tonight you're placing some foil over the front door handle before you go to bed. This will help identify if someone sneakily tries to enter while you sleep. You wake up the next morning, and it appears the foil is slightly ripped. Someone has been here, and they're sure to return. Another option is to put a mug on the doorknob. When the knob turns, the mug will fall, causing a noise to wake you up and hopefully deter the intruder. Your main concern is that a tradesman stopped by recently. He said that he was working next door and asked to use your toilet. You refused and felt bad at the time for being rude. But it was a very smart move. About 60% of burglaries in the USA are made by someone you know or have met before. That tradesman, while going to the bathroom, could have adjusted something in your house to make their return entry a little easier. They may have wanted to take a closer look at what security system is installed, check the structural integrity of your home, and found out what valuable loot you might have. Finally, today you're going on vacation. You need to prepare your house and make it as safe as possible. A full post box is the first thing a robber will look for in a target. Your neighbor will need to take your mail while you're away. A well-manicured property is a clear sign that you are always there. You've always kept your lawn mown and hedges trimmed, so you will need to arrange for someone to do this while you're away. If it was winter, any untouched snow around your house would also make it a target. Having a neighbor make pretend footprints that show recent activity will also provide a deterrent. There are many types of hedges that act as a great first defense. Luckily, you have sharp-leaved shrubs along your fences. If someone jumps into your property and lands on a sharp or spiky bush, they will immediately cry out in discomfort. This will alert your neighbors of an intruder. And the foliage will also catch fragments of clothing that could be used as evidence later. In preparation for your trip the week before, you opened and closed your curtains at random times throughout the day. You made sure there were no clear patterns, 
so it won't matter if they're left open while you're away, just in case someone was scouting your property. Burglars spend several days walking or driving through neighborhoods, identifying the behaviors of each house. One thing they don't really like is a neighborhood watch. Criminals do their research before they start scouting and will avoid these areas. Something for you to organize when you get back. Now, move all your expensive electronics away from the windows so there's nothing of value in clear view. Put them inside a cupboard or a concealed room. Don't worry about TVs. They're too large and take effort to move. The criminals are more interested in the smaller devices, like an iPad and gaming devices. Put your small expensive items, like jewelry, in boxes and hide them away in a secret location. Surprisingly, a kid's room is a good spot. Burglars have admitted to never going into them, as there's nothing of value in toys. Take photos of all the serial numbers on your electronic devices and create an inventory for insurance purposes. 95% of break-ins are done by force, so it's time to reinforce your windows and doors. You can make it even more difficult for the crooks. Remove all stools, chairs, and ladders in the backyard and put them into your garage. Otherwise, they will help provide easier access points to higher entrances, like the air conditioner box. This is one of their favorites. Without a way to reinforce it, it's easy to tear off and creates an entrance. Don't make it easier for them with a step up. Burglars can break down a weak door within one minute. Install a metal frame instead of wood for more support. The hinges and lock should have adequate strength to withstand being kicked long enough until they give up. With the lock as the remaining weak spot, this can easily be picked by an experienced thief. A simple protection lock that holds it in place will make sure it won't budge. The hinges on your garage door swing outwards, which makes it vulnerable and can be accessed by taking the pins out of the hinges. Replace them with tamper-proof pins so they can't be removed. And lastly, the garage overhead door is one of the first places a burglar looks to access. They don't have a lock that fully secures them. Attach a padlock on the latch connecting it to the track, holding it in place. Your garage door doesn't have this option, so drill a hole in the track just above one of the rollers and attach a padlock. Robbers are scared of dogs, the territorial and loyal guardians of the house. A survey found that most houses burgled didn't have dogs because thieves don't want to draw attention during a heist. Unfortunately, you don't own one, but just placing a dog bowl outside the front door will discourage them. The burglars have adapted their craft with technology. Four out of five criminals use social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and Google Maps to find their targets. Even sharing a photo with a house key in it is enough for a burglar to create their own key by zooming in and taking the exact measurements. Make sure your wireless network is secure and use a new, much stronger password while away. You're not only vulnerable to physical objects being stolen. Valuable data like passwords and access codes can be taken through your network. And there's also the threat of infecting devices through malicious malware. You can also remove the vision of your house completely from Google Maps. Type in your home address find the street view of your residence, press the Options button, and select Report a Problem. You'll be taken to a screen with an image of your home, with the option to move a red square to cover your property. Request it to be blurred under the option My Home, and enter your exact address. It will only take a couple of days to be processed. Don't leave the radio on while away. It won't help. Through the burglar's method of scouting houses, they take note of radio and TV sounds. When they return, they check if they're still on, which just makes it easier to confirm that no one's home. 
An alternative option to show active presence at home is by making your own audio, something that plays ambient noises randomly throughout the day with footsteps, conversations, and a dog barking. Leaving your lights on is also not a good idea. Someone spying will notice your house easier, especially at night, and you'll be further robbed on your electricity bill. You're just about ready to leave on your vacation and need to take the trash out. If you have some large boxes, break them down so they can fit inside the bin. Hide any clues about what valuables you recently received. Last check, all the doors are locked and no windows are left open. Now you can finally enjoy your trip. But as you enjoy yourself in your picturesque location, leave any snaps on your phone while you're over there and post them online only when you return. If you do share your photos while you're away, it will have made all your preparations pointless. Every criminal in the area will know you're not home. But with 2.5 million houses burgled annually in the USA, a house without a modern security system is 300% more likely to be broken into. When you get back from your break, it will be a great idea to install one. When a stranger asks you to take a picture of them and gives you a phone, don't rush to take it. Look at them first. If he or she looks suspicious or unfriendly, it's better to refuse the request nicely. Maybe it's a fraud. They give you the phone, you turn on the camera and see that it's broken. The image in the photo is damaged. You give the stranger their phone back and they accuse you of breaking the phone. They demand money and behave aggressively. In such a situation, it's better not to panic and not be provoked. Calmly leave. Make it clear that you won't fall for this. And if they behave too aggressively, then call the police. You're walking down the street and a man or woman in dirty clothes runs up to you. They pretend to be homeless and behave like they're in a hurry. They show you a strange coin and say they found it in a basement of an old house. The stranger says the coin is a very rare specimen and is worth thousands of dollars. You take a photo of the coin and find out information about it on the internet. And it turns out to be true. The coin is expensive. The homeless person can't sell it for that kind of money because no one will believe them. They offer to give the coin to you for a few hundred bucks. The offer seems profitable, but it's a hoax. The stranger offers you a fake that costs no more than a couple of dollars. They pretend to be poor and homeless to make their story seem realistic. Refuse the purchase and call the police. This guy can trick other people too. Thieves can put an advertising flyer, a newspaper, or a sticker on the door of your house or apartment. In the doorway, you can find a piece of paper or a thin strip from a plastic bottle. If you don't remove one of these items for a long time, then the thieves understand that you're not at home. This way, thieves mark buildings and apartments that are easy to get into. After all, getting into an empty apartment is much safer. So as soon as you see a foreign object, immediately get rid of it. If a flyer or bookmark hangs on the door for one or two days, it tells the thief that no one's home. Of course, these can be real advertising stickers, but you still don't need them. In addition to flyers, they may be strange labels on the house or apartment door, numbers, crosses, or other symbols. This is how robbers mark houses they're about to break in. If you see such a sign, it's better to call the police. You're approaching your car and see a shirt or a piece of cloth wrapped around the wiper. At this moment, don't try to remove it. Calmly get into the car, look around, and drive away from this place. Then, when you have changed the location, you can safely take off the cloth. The fact is that the scammers tie the fabric on the wipers on purpose and as tightly as possible. While you're messing around with the shirt and try to take it off, they can get into your car and drive away or even jump you from behind. You arrive at the supermarket, stop in the parking lot, and get out of the car. At this moment, another, more expensive car stops nearby. A neat and wealthy-looking man comes out of there and asks you for some money for gas. He says that his phone's run out of juice, he forgot his wallet at home, and he urgently needs to refill his tank. He promises to send you the money as soon as he gets to the phone. Don't give him money. He's a fraud. It might seem he really needs help and will definitely return the money because he looks like an honest and decent person. But most likely, his car is rented and his clothes are cheap. During the day, he drives around the city and asks to borrow money for the gas from different drivers, counting on their sympathy. By the end of the day, he accumulates a large amount and doesn't return it. 
You walk down the street and see a beautiful coin or a phone lying on the ground. Don't pick it up. It's well glued to the asphalt. You will not be able to lift it on the first attempt. You will start trying to take the object off the ground, and while you're at it, the scammer will run past and grab your bag. Such a clever trick resembles cheese in a mouse trap. In movies, we often see how thieves feed a dog to make it friendly during a house robbery, or they add sleeping pills to dog food. In reality, everything is much more unpleasant. Thieves can steal your dog to make it easier to rob the house. Of course, if the dog is missing, it doesn't always mean someone wants to rob you. However, if this happens, then you need to be on your guard. Robbers and thieves spend a lot of time on social networks. Don't rush to post photos from your vacation in another country. When you do this, you basically shout to the whole world, look how far away I am from my house. It's better to wait until you get home and only then upload the photos. Also, there are cases when thieves collaborate with mobile scammers. They got access to the social pages of some people to find out when they were going on vacation. Then, they reported the information to the real robbers. You're driving home from work and suddenly notice you're almost out of gas. That's weird because you recently filled a full tank. You go to the gas station and to the car repair center to check if there is a gas leak in the vehicle. Meanwhile, robbers can take things out of your house. They deliberately drain the fuel from your car so that you'd go to the gas station. They detain you and buy time to clean out your home. If you're sure that you refueled recently and the gas was drained from you, then you should call your neighbors and ask them to monitor your house or apartment. If you regularly use cleaning services for your house, then you should be alerted by the appearance of a new cleaner. Every time a cleaner is replaced, the cleaning company should warn you about it. If this didn't happen, check for yourself. Call and find out all about the new cleaner. If they have new information about the new employer, then probably the thief wants to get into your apartment and inspect it for valuables. Call the police and don't let the cleaner inside the house. Also, thieves can pretend to be plumbers, doctors, or social workers. Demand the necessary documents from them before letting these people into your home. They can be nice and sociable, but while you're talking to them, they're observing your house. Don't throw unnecessary documents in the trash. Scammers can check the trash cans. They can find payment receipts, some certificates. It doesn't mean anything to you, but a thief can get information about your ID, earnings, and insurance. Always chop up the documents you throw away. There are many fraudulent ways in which discarded documents can be used. Here are some more tips that will reduce the risk of robbery of your property. Don't leave cardboard boxes from new TV, expensive phones, laptops, or gold watches in the trash can. There's no need to show that you're living well. The advice is not to throw out such garbage near your house. Also, you can cover the boxes with plastic bags so thieves can't see them. If you live in a private house and trees grow next to it, then cut off the branches stretching to your windows. A thief can easily use them as a ladder. Also, thieves try to avoid houses with plants and flowers growing under the windows, especially if it's roses with thorns or cacti. You can put a Beware of Angry Dog sticker on the door even if you don't have a pet. No one will want to enter inside. You can even attach a fake CCTV camera. It will also scare robbers away. To prevent a robbery, you can create an illusion that there is always someone in the house, even if you have gone on vacation. No need to leave the TV or music on. You can set a special timer that will be turning on the TV for a while every day. There are also special light bulbs with a timer. Let them light up in the house every evening and night for 20 to 30 minutes while you're away. Thieves often look at filled mailboxes. They see a lot of letters and realize nobody has been home for a long time. Wherever you go on vacation for a while, ask a neighbor to pull out your mail. Or you can go to the post office and ask not to deliver letters to your mailbox before your arrival. Lucky iPhone users, beware! Your favorite gadget sometimes gets viruses too. One day, you may see an ad notification from your calendar. And no matter how much time you spend on deleting those events, they just won't disappear. To put an end to this misadventure, go to Settings, Calendar, Accounts, and delete all of them except for iCloud and Gmail ones. 
There may be really few viruses for iPhone, but you're never protected from juice jacking. If you don't want to be the one whose data accidentally leaked, public chargers are a no-go. Airport, cafe, public transport, you name it. It only concerns the USB chargers. A good old adapter won't let you down. Be scrupulous about various permissions, too. Make sure the apps you download are from a protected source and aren't fake. There are many shortcuts available on the internet, but most of them aren't safe. Read the app reviews before downloading. Yeah, sounds obvious, but it does help save both your time and phone. Going stealthy is vital for your privacy. If you don't have a special screen protector, just adjust the brightness level. It's harder for anyone to see your past this way. Airplane mode isn't only great for keeping your charge, but also at keeping your data safe. The logic is simple. If the phone is offline, how can anyone get your data? The iPhone runs out of charge really fast when it's cold because of the aluminum case. Aluminum gets cold way faster than plastic. By the way, an Android runs out of charge slower just because most Android phones have plastic cases. And nope, there's no remedy or piece of advice. Sorry, guys. It happens to anyone, at least. If you accidentally dropped your phone in the snow or just left it outside and it got frozen, don't charge it the very same moment you bring it back. Leave it for 20 to 30 minutes to get a bit warmer. Then you might want to get a water eject shortcut. It's not set by default, but you can easily get one by just Googling it. There are also a lot of free apps that eject the water from the dynamics with the power of sound. If you can't delete a certain app for some reason, check your settings. Go to Settings, Screen Time, Content, and Privacy Restrictions. In iTunes and App Store purchases, there should be a tick on Don't Allow. Change it for Allow, and now you can delete any app. One of the most bugging problems for all iPhone users is when you run out of memory. Even if you delete the photos, there's still not enough space. Go to Settings, iPhone Storage, and make sure that recently deleted photos are actually deleted. If not, delete them in the Storage section. Keyboards have their secrets, too. To end a sentence with a period and start a new sentence, just tap the space button twice. Also, if you prefer typing holding the phone with one hand only, choose the right keyboard. Whenever you change the language, there are three keyboard icons below. The left one is for the left hand only, the central is for both hands, and the right one is ta-da, for the right hand only. What a surprise. If you tap the uppercase button twice, you'll get caps lock. Many letters also have hidden symbols. If you hold your finger on a button, you'll see them. Now you can type en français, <laughs> respecting all the characters. Okay, and if you accidentally deleted that long message you've been trying to write, just shake your phone. It'll activate the undo typing function. Hold the space button in the notes, or whatever text you're dealing with. This way, you can easily slide across the keyboard to get to any part of the text. The note drawings can be nice and smooth, even if you don't have a stylus. When you finish your drawing, hold it for a second with your finger iPhone will automatically make it look better. No more curved lines. Slow Wi-Fi can be really annoying, but your gadget knows how to handle it. Go to your Wi-Fi settings and see if the data saver mode is on. If not, just tap the slider and voila! Now you're surfing the net at a completely different speed. Sooner or later, any phone gets slower, even if it used to be a brand new 256 GB iPhone. In this case, you just need to clear the RAM. Turn on the assistive touch, it'll be of great help. Then squeeze the power button, and before sliding the turn off menu, press the home button on the assistive touch. Your RAM is as good as new now. Assistive touch can also help you set new functions to simple tabs. Go to Settings, General, Accessibility, and in the Assistive Touch section, you can change any commands in the Custom Actions menu. For a double tap, I chose the screenshot, since a combination of Home plus Power button seems a bit inconvenient. To make a screenshot, tap the Accessibility menu circle twice. To change the battery icon color, go to Accessibility, choose Display and Text Size, and slide the Smart Invert button. 
The battery icon color turns blue now. If you increase the contrast, it will get a lighter blue shade. When your phone is on charge, the indicator will turn purple. Ooh, magic! To make your iPhone louder, go to Settings, Music, and find the equalizer. It's called EQ in the menu. Late night option will make your phone somewhat 20% louder than it used to be. Louder? At night? Really? To record a video without being noticed, go to the camera. Start video recording. Go back to the notification center, the video will be recorded, but it won't be seen on the screen. Hey, why do you even want to do that? Just because you can? Hmm. You can also set a unique vibration for any of your contacts. Go to Settings, Sounds, and open the ringtone settings. You usually have the default vibration, but if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see the Custom section. Tap any rhythm that you like and save it. You can set it for any of your contacts. I know, you must have dozens of tabs in your browser, or probably a hundred, at least I do. To close them all in one touch, hold the Done button in the lower left corner and choose the Close All X tabs. I closed 336 last time. Eh, That's insane. If you accidentally closed all the tabs and need to go back to some of the recent ones, hold the plus button in the middle. It'll open the list of recently closed tabs, so all you gotta do is scroll down hoping to find the one you didn't want to close. iPhones may not have the most endurable batteries, but they beat everyone when it comes to photo quality. Turn on the grid in the camera settings, go to General, choose Camera to enable the grid. It can help you make better compositions in the photo. By the way, people with iPhones don't need a separate app for QR readers, since all the iPhones have them built in. Turn on the camera and point the camera to the code. You'll see the pop-up window on the top of the screen. Tap the window, and you'll go straight to the browser to whatever link the QR code had. If it doesn't work, enable the Scan QR Codes function in the camera settings. If you need to find some special word combination when you're reading an online article, go to the search bar and type the word you're interested in. You're going to see three sections. Google search, and eh, don't need it. Bookmarks and history, don't need it. And on this page, tap here. The word you need is going to be highlighted with yellow. Plus, there will be a special navigation bar on the bottom with the arrows up and down to look for the keyword easily. If you like writing long, romantic letters in your notes but don't want anyone to read them, then set a pass to any of your notes. There are two ways how to do that, depending on what iPhone model you have. For instance, for iPhone 6, you got to slide from right to left, and you'll see three icons – lock, folder, and bin. Use the bin if the romantic letter is bad, and the lock to protect it from peaky eyes. Set the pass, but make sure you actually remember it. You can't delete the pass. If this one didn't work, just tap and hold the note itself, and you'll see the password bar in the dropping menu. Set the pass, and from now on, no one's gonna know about romantic letters to Juliet that you've been writing all night long. Good night, Romeo! Now first, you probably already know that germs are everywhere, and it's impossible for humans to get rid of them. These tiny creatures train our immune system. We're becoming stronger when our organism constantly faces bacteria and improves its protection skills. So don't worry about what you see next. (laughs) Welcome to one of the favorite places among bacteria and microbes – hotel rooms. Yes, they seem to be so clean, but in some ways, they're more dangerous than a garbage dump. Everything is dirty at the landfill, and you're afraid to touch anything. But the dirt in hotel rooms is almost invisible. Germs are waiting for you here, and there are a lot of them. So the first problems appear already in the elevator. The buttons on the panel are swarming with various bacteria. Suppose no one cleans them with a disinfectant. In that case, These buttons become the arena where billions of microbes multiply and devour each other. Take a look at an ordinary apartment building. There are elevators, too. The same people live in this house, transmitting the same germs when they touch the elevator buttons. Your body encounters these microbes often and quickly develops the needed protection. But different people stay in hotels. A guy from some African country can bring a bacterium that will be dangerous for a girl from cold Norway. Therefore, after you touch the button, 
wash your hands with a soap or disinfectant. So, the elevator opens its doors, and you walk towards your room. Watch out! There's another hot spot ahead. See that door handle? This area is another beloved playground for germs. How many people have touched it before you? How long has it been since it was washed? Do you know why such a handle is more dangerous than a toilet seat? Most of all, microbes accumulate on our fingers and palms. When we don't wash them, we transfer a million bacteria from one place to another by touching the surfaces of different objects. So the best way is to touch the door handle with the same hand you use to press the button in the elevator. As soon as you enter the room, wash your hands. The good news is that hotel staff clean bathrooms and toilets much better than the rest of the room. So you're a bit safer here. But still, take a good look at the corners of the bathroom and the tiles. If you see black spots somewhere, it means there's mold. This thing can cause allergic reactions like runny nose and eye irritation. Mold can be pretty dangerous, but hotel staff usually watch it closely. So it's unlikely that there will be something like this in your room unless it's a cheap hotel. You don't stay there, do you? Oh, by the way, did you know that toilet paper in a public toilet contains more germs than the toilet lid? You make a mistake if you cover the seat with pieces of that paper. First, many people touch it, which means they transfer bacteria onto it. Secondly, dirty little splashes get on the roll when someone flushes the toilet. Microbes feel more comfortable living on soft paper than on the hard surfaces of the toilet. So don't put it on the seat. But if you see a metal or plastic cover on the roll, you're lucky, since the roll is protected from germs. Then, after you've done your business and washed your hands thoroughly, you have two options. Wipe your hands with a paper towel or use a hand dryer. It doesn't matter what you choose, both variants have a lot of germs. But if you use the dryer, bacteria will fly all over the room. So better grab a towel. Okay, you come out of the bathroom and find yourself in a danger zone. Don't think that all germs there are harmless. Some of the most common bacteria in hotels cause intestinal infections. If you don't want to spend the rest of your vacation or business trip next to or on the toilet, get ready to fight colonies of tiny parasites. The first thing you need to do is wash those glasses and cups with soap. Some travelers carry their own mugs with them, which is a good idea. Then look around and ask yourself, which places do people touch the most? These are the TV remote control, coffee machine, fridge, door handles, tables, hair dryer, and windows. But relax, you don't need to do the cleaning instead of the hotel staff. It's enough to have wet wipes with a powerful disinfectant. Wipe the surface of all these objects. Perhaps you worry in vain, and the hotel carefully monitors how clean the rooms are. <laughs> or you can tell the manager you want to have your room cleaned again. So you've wiped all the surfaces and jumped into bed tired. Unfortunately, you're not the only one to rest on that soft mattress. You have a huge company of bacteria. Of course, washing pillowcases and bed linen destroys germs, but what about the bedspread? Most likely, nobody washes it. Removing germs from the tissue is difficult, so you'll probably have to put up with it. But the thing you shouldn't accept is bed bugs. If you notice dark spots on your mattress, this is most likely the waste left by bed bugs. You're not hungry, are you? I don't want to spoil your appetite. The insects themselves can hide deep in the mattress. They can sleep there for months and then wake up to satisfy their hunger. While you're resting, they come out and bite your legs. If you notice small red spots on your skin in the morning, then bed bugs have, well, kissed you. The bites of these beetles are not dangerous. Some people may have a mild allergic reaction in the form of irritation on the skin. But the problem is that some bed bugs can get into your clothes or things. Then you'll bring them home. These creatures multiply rapidly. Therefore, if you don't want a colony of biting bugs in your house, then wash your clothes, clean your luggage, and go to the shower. But before that, ask the hotel manager to refund your money because bed bugs are unex. By the way, even if the room is squeaky clean, it doesn't mean there are no bed bugs in it. Perhaps previous guests brought them. So your bed has no black spots and you have wiped all the dangerous surfaces. 
that's it, you're safe. But try to walk on the floor wearing slippers or thick socks, as the floor is also a source of dirt. You spend several nights in the hotel and finally return to a clean and safe place, your home. Unfortunately, your house can also have many germs you don't see. Do you like to have fun with friends and play video games? Do you remember when the last time you cleaned the gamepad was? All your friends have held it in their hands, which means you've collected all of their microbes there. Your kitchen cutting board. How thoroughly do you wash it? It's not enough just to splash it with water, especially if you cut meat and vegetables. You can cut some squash, and its germs will stick to the surface. Then you quickly wash the board and put it back in place. But the germs haven't gone away. They're still firmly attached to the surface, waiting for you to cut bread. Then they'll jump onto the food and get into your stomach. Uh, how's that appetite doing? Still good? Another dangerous place is a dish sponge. Even if you use a good detergent, germs still accumulate there. The best way to get rid of them is to change sponges once a week. And now you'll see a paradise for bacteria. A place with an ideal cold temperature and a lot of food, from fresh to spoiled. Hey, it's your fridge! There you put products that you bring from the supermarket. Hundreds of people could touch them with their hands, leaving millions of germs. Therefore, don't forget to wash your fridge often. And also, keep any meat away from packaged products, because germs on a rare steak multiply and spoil it quickly. Well, perhaps you're too worried about your health now. If so, then you should remember the words from the beginning of the video. Let me quote. You probably already know that Germans are everywhere. Wait, that's not it. Ah, sorry. Neighborhood watch plans are a fantastic way to get your community looking out for each other. If you're going on a Christmas getaway, ask your neighbors to keep an eye on your place. They can do this through simple activities like moving your letters from the mailbox or turning on a light once in a while. This can make it seem like your house is busy. Not only does this reduce the risk of unwanted guests, but some insurance companies might even cut you a deal if you're part of a local plan. That extra money could come in handy for Christmas presents. Just saying. Burglars also need to get pretty creative during the holiday season, too. There have been cases of crooks melting locks on doors, windows, and sheds. It sounds a bit extreme, but it can happen. Make sure your locks are working, more so during this time of the year. Also, think about installing wood or steel composite doors that won't be as easily damaged. Store your car or spare house keys somewhere safe, away from curious eyes, in case any unwanted guests come knocking. Another good idea is to mark your stuff. That's because burglars hate personalized items. If your belongings have your name, phone number, or address on them, they're a tough item to sell. Plus, it's easier for law enforcement to spot your things. So whenever possible, put your personal touch on your valuables through carving or embroidery. It will also increase the odds of your goods finding their way back to you in case they get taken away. Here's another smart way to make it seem like you're home while you're out and about if you can't rely on your neighbors. Use timers for your lights and leave the radio on. You can even leave an ironing board with a pile of clothes nearby to make it look like you just stepped out. Just remember to turn the iron off. During this time of the year, your vehicle needs some extra care too. With people out shopping for Christmas presents and stashing them in their trunks, those cars become prime targets. Never leave your car alone with your Christmas haul inside. Always park in a well-lit spot or on a driveway to scare off opportunistic thieves. And you know those frosty mornings when you leave your engine running to defrost your windshield? Forget about it. Leaving your car unattended with the keys in the ignition is pretty dangerous. Most of us think that a beware of dog sign is a good way to keep unwanted strangers at bay, but during the day, it can actually signal that there's no alarm set around your house, since dogs can trigger sensors unnecessarily. Burglars might think it's an opportunity to sneak in, so if you don't have a guard dog, maybe reconsider that sign. However, you might want to set a free guard dog skill on Alexa. You can remotely activate it to make a barking and growling dog noise. That should make anyone think twice about breaking in. 
Browsing through received Christmas cards at the end of the year is pretty special. Burglars love it too, more so when you toss the envelopes in the bin. It's their free pass to all sorts of personal information about you and your family. Make sure to rip up any piece of paper or packaging before taking them to the trash. Also, if your floor is a mess of cards and letters, it's a clear sign to burglars that you're not home. You might want to get a cage for your letterbox to hide your mail and prevent letterbox fishing. If you're heading out of town for the holidays, it's also a good idea to tidy up your house before departing. Leaving suitcases and bags out signal your house might be empty, so it may become an easier target. Hide them under the bed or in the garage before leaving the house. Also, think about your family calendar. If you've got your birthday dates displayed where outsiders can see them, you might be in for an unpleasant surprise visit. Try to switch to online calendars. They're easier to be kept private. I know, I know, we all want our Christmas trees by the window for that picture-perfect cozy look. But the problem is, it also gives thieves a good look at your presents. Lights on your tree can also tell them if you're home or not. So maybe use a timer for the lights and change it up every day. And don't forget those stockings. Keep them out of sight. You can close your blinds upwards as well to make sure people aren't spying. Waiting until the last minute to wrap your presents can be pretty stressful by itself. It's not the safest move when it comes to your security either. Unwrapped gifts are the perfect surprise for burglars because they can see their value up front without having to unwrap them. Try covering each one individually and skip the gift bags. Burglars usually make their escape on foot, so they'll steer clear of the bulky bags. Once you've unwrapped your presents with your friends and family by your side, make sure to store your new stuff somewhere safe. If you've had your Christmas vacation booked for some time, you might be excited to share your holiday joy. Just like you might be excited to share this video with your friends, which you totally should. But be mindful about oversharing personal information on social media. Posting pictures of your expensive dinners abroad can tip off potential thieves that your home is empty. Use your privacy settings wisely and be careful who can see your posts. Buying alarms and motion sensors for the darker corners of your home is also a great idea, though it does take a bit more planning and financial investment. However, the average cost of a burglary is on average about $3,000, so consider making the investment. Don't underestimate those doggy doors and cat flaps. Some people might even be able to sneak into your house through the bigger ones. And while CCTV is great, burglars tend to be sly. They will themselves monitor your house for a while, looking for patterns and potential hiding spots like bushes or dark areas. Plus, during the holidays, they'll be on the lookout for missing cars as a sign that a house is vacant. It's not just your house or vehicle that needs protecting. When you're out shopping, try to stick to daytime if you can. If you have to go at night, try not to go alone. Also, don't carry loads of cash. It's better to pay with a credit or a check when you can. If you do have cash, though, keep it in your front pocket. It will be easier to monitor. If you lose your credit card or notice anything funny going on in your banking app, call the credit card company right away. To buy presents in advance to avoid overloading yourself with bags, you need to see where you're going and move freely to avoid accidents. Even better, switch to buying gifts online. Just make sure to stick to reputable websites. They'll take better care of your personal information. If you do have to get some stuff from the local mall, for instance, watch out for strangers who might approach you. Especially around this time of year, scammers might try to distract you and steal your valuables. During the holiday season, you might get all jolly and let more people into your home, especially if you're planning to host larger parties. Be mindful, though, that some out there might pretend to be friendly neighbors bearing gifts just to sneak a peek at your house and valuables. Keep an eye out for uninvited visitors, especially if they seem a bit off. If you're heading out but need someone to water your plants, feed your pets, or handle your curtains, don't be tempted to hide spare keys in plain sight. It's more obvious than you think. Burglars are clever and they know all the usual hiding spots like under flower pots or on top of door frames. Instead, give those spare keys to someone you trust, like a family member or a neighbor.
You check into your hotel room, connect to Wi-Fi, jump on the bed, and post 15 photos of your new window view. When the initial surge of excitement is gone, you notice a suspicious blinking light on your big TV. Could it be that someone is watching you? Or have you just seen too many spy movies? Well, hidden cameras come in all shapes and sizes. Large ones are easy to spot, but the small ones can be really sneaky and inconspicuous. They can be hiding behind furniture, in decorations, or vents, and anywhere else you'll have trouble noticing. There are even special cameras that can be hidden in everyday movable objects, like alarm clocks, picture frames, vases, and lamps. Check to see if these objects are facing at a strange angle, or if they're positioned to get the best view of your room or bathroom. The easiest way to spot a hidden cam is to look for the lens reflection, because all cameras come with lenses. Turn off the lights and slowly scan the room with a flashlight, laser pointer, or a special wireless spy cam detector. It comes with infrared scanning lights and one illuminating light. When you find a reflective red spot, you gotta turn on the flashlight to help check if there is a hidden camera. Definitely check the vents along with any other holes and gaps in the walls or ceiling. Some advanced detectors even show you what the camera is seeing, making it way easier to spot and disable. The detectors only work on cameras that are turned on and working normally, though. Your mobile phone can also help you find some hidden threats. Turn on Bluetooth and walk around. See if any unknown devices pop up on the screen. Another idea is to install a network scanner app that shows all devices that are connected to the Wi-Fi network you're using at the hotel. When it's done scanning, study the list for devices called something like IP camera or cam. Plus, you can put your phone on selfie mode, turn off the light and close the curtains, and look around the room slowly while focusing on the screen. Keep an eye out for purple or white lights on the screen. You can play detective some more and call your friend or family member and start walking around your room. Secret cameras should emit a sort of radio frequency. It will most likely interfere with your phone call signal. If you start hearing any weird noises while you're on the phone in a certain area of your room, make sure to inspect it carefully. Check out the light switches, electrical outlets, lamps, and other objects you normally wouldn't pay attention to. If they look a bit crooked, have a hole, or seem misplaced, it could be a sign that someone tampered with them. Many spy devices need wires, and whoever installed them had to hide those wires, often behind the vinyl baseboard. That's why the place where the floor and the wall meet is another area you should check. Ridges, bumps, or discoloration could be a sign there's a microphone hiding there. The same goes for spots on ceilings and walls even if they're not larger than a coin. If you do find a hidden camera or something looking suspicious, don't shy away and let the hotel administration or your booking service know about it. Don't try to touch or move the device yourself. If the hotel denies everything, contact local law enforcement. After you've scanned the room for cameras, check out the mirrors. Someone could be watching you from the other side. First, see if the mirror is built into the wall or can be adjusted. If the mirror is semi-transparent, it will be built into the wall. You can do a simple test to check the mirror. Press your fingertip against the glass and push firmly enough to leave a fingerprint as you move your finger away. Study the fingerprint. If there is a small gap between the print and the mirror where the glass should be, then it's just a mirror. On a semi-transparent mirror, there will be no gap. Another way to check if your mirror is semi-transparent is simply to tap the glass. If someone is watching you from the other side, the mirror will make an empty sound. A double mirror needs a brighter light on the other side than on yours. Get close to it and cup your hands around your eyes. Do you see some light behind the mirror? If so, you might have an unwanted audience. Before you leave your room or go to bed, make sure every door is securely locked. By every door, I mean not only the entrance to the room, but also the door leading to the terrace, if you have one. 
you can bring a portable door lock with you for extra security if you're staying in. You could also start a little DIY project and wrap a belt or a bag strap around the arm that pushes the door shut. Buckle it up and wrap it around several times for an extra layer of protection. Another idea for when you're about to nap or go to sleep is to build a pyramid of stuff by the door. Glasses and mugs will do perfectly. If someone tries to get inside while you're sleeping, there'll be some serious noise. Intruders prefer to keep it low-key, so they're highly likely to give up on robbing you straight away. If you travel with some valuables and don't feel comfortable leaving them around the room, you could put them in the safe inside your room. But because those safes use passcodes instead of physical locks, someone from the hotel has to know the master code to unlock it, just in case. So, you can bring your own safe with you instead. You can find the ones looking like books on Amazon, for example. They're made of strong metal and textured paper. They come with a combination lock and have enough room to fit your passports, cash, and jewelry. In case you have to leave your laptop in the room and want to make sure no one plugs in a USB drive to steal your data, here's what you can do. Leave a bottle of water or some other item next to the USB port. Measure the distance. Let's say it's one thumb length away. For someone to plug in their device in the laptop, they need to move the bottle. You can take it one step further and drop a pen parallel to the laptop under a certain angle. You can measure the angle with your smartwatch or phone using the Compass app. Again, if someone moves it, you'll know. Even something as simple as a please do not disturb sign can help you figure out if someone entered your room while you were away. Make it look like you left in a rush and the sign accidentally stuck between the door and the door frame. If you come back and the sign is hanging freely, then someone must have ignored it and tried to disturb you. In that case, you can contact reception and ask to send someone to enter the room with you to keep you safe. If you care about the cleanliness of your room as much as you do about your belongings and your personal safety, this one's for you. Hotel housekeeping workers normally have up to 20 rooms to take care of on an 8-hour shift. It means they'll have no more than 30 minutes for your room. It gives them enough time to make the bed, clean the floors in the room and the bathroom, empty the trash bins, and dust all surfaces. But they rarely have the time to take care of smaller objects like light switches, door and drawer handles, and remotes. And yes, these are exactly the objects you'll be in contact with the most. They can actually have more germs than the toilet. So if you want to be sure those germs won't land on your hands, Bring enough antibacterial wipes to clean all those things before you touch them. Wow, if you're a lucky owner of a brand new iPhone 12, or you've just updated your operating system to iOS 14, don't be afraid of that creepy green or orange dot that pops up in the upper right corner. Green dot shows you're using your camera, and orange indicates you're using the microphone. Let's say you have TikTok in the background that might passively use both camera and mic. These dots will show it. It can help control the battery life. To make your iPhone louder, go to Settings, Music, and find the equalizer. It's called EQ in the menu. Late night option will make your phone about 20% louder than it used to be. You can also create a unique vibration for any of your contacts. Go to Settings, Sounds, and open the ringtone settings. You usually have the default vibration, but if you scroll down a bit, you're going to see the custom section. Tap any rhythm you like and save it. You can set it for any of your contacts. If customized vibration isn't enough and you still miss your granny's calls, try to customize the flash. Turn it on as an extra notification for incoming calls. Go to General Settings, choose the Accessibility section, and head to Hearing. Turn on the LED flash for alerts. You're never going to miss that call again. If you press the space button and start sliding, you'll have a cursor. It can be handy if you want to find a typo or correct some word in the notes or whatever text you're dealing with. Now, if you typed a very long message, but it turns out you need to get rid of it, 
you can literally shake it off. Just shake the phone to undo the typing. Whenever you need to choose more than one icon, tap and hold only one and, with the second finger, add all the other icons you need. This one's not going to work if you have an iPhone 6 or older. The newest iPhones have a super convenient feature that is helpful when you need to go from one application to another. Look at that line at the bottom of the screen. Slide left or right and find the app you need. No more double tapping and notification center. If you like falling asleep to your favorite music or to another YouTube video, just like I do, go to Clock. Tap the timer and select When the Time Ends section. Scroll down until you see Stop Playing button. This feature shuts down all the media apps, such as music, any windows that play sounds or video, and even the YouTube app. Pretty handy if you ever woke up at 3 a.m. in the middle of some random video that was auto-played. Yeah. We're all used to messengers, but iMessages are fun. Press the send button to add different wow effects to your message. The bubble section has four features. Invisible ink makes it impossible to read the message unless you wipe it with a finger. Slide the finger from right to left and back to kind of clear it. With the gentle effect, the letters seem really tiny at the start, but then they grow larger. The loud effect, vice versa, makes them pop at the start so they appear way larger, but the size goes back to normal in a few seconds. The slam effect speaks for itself. The message literally slams the screen. Tap the right button called the screen effects. It's fun too. For example, it has echo effects, so your friend's screen's going to be overwhelmed with echoing texts. Slide right for a lot more different effects. There's definitely one for touching text you're about to send. The iPhone font has different sizes as well. To make it bigger or smaller, go to the Display and Brightness section in the setting. Tap the text size and adjust it the way you like. You can take a selfie not only with the volume button on your phone, but simply by hitting that button on your headphones. This hack is for iPhone users, but many Androids can use it too. Mind that it usually works with original headphones. iPhones may not have the most durable batteries, but they beat everyone when it comes to photo quality. Turn on the grid in the camera settings. Go to General. Choose Camera. To enable the grid, it can help you make better compositions in the photo. If you like typing with one hand, it's probably high time you set the right keyboard. While typing, hold the globe button three keyboards will appear. The one on the left is used whenever you type holding your phone in the left hand. The one in the middle is for both hands, and the one on the right is for typing with the right hand only. If you like writing long, romantic letters in your notes, but don't want anyone to read them, set a pass to any of your notes. There are two ways to do that, depending on your iPhone model. For iPhone 6, you gotta slide from right to left and see three icons, lock, folder, and bin. Use the bin if the romantic letter is bad, and the lock to protect it from peaky eyes. Set the pass, but make sure you actually remember it. You can't delete it. If this didn't work, just tap and hold the note itself, and you'll see the password bar in the drop-down menu. Set the pass, and nobody's gonna know about the romantic letters to Jane you're writing at night. Newest models of iPhone support the coolest feature ever. Now you can make a screenshot of the whole browser page in one file. To do this, press the volume up button plus the power button. If you need to find some special word combination while you're reading an online article, go to the search bar and type the word you're interested in. You're going to see three sections, Google search, bookmarks and history, and on this page. Tap the last one. The word you need is going to be highlighted in yellow. Plus, there will be a special navigation bar on the bottom with the arrows up and down to look for the keyword easily. Don't forget to refresh your iPhone's RAM every now and again. It can help your device work better and faster. To do that, you gotta drill down deep. Go to Setting, General, Accessibility, Assistive Touch, and turn it on. Press Plus, then Minus, and then the Power button. You'll see the power off bar. Press the assistive touch and hold the home button. 
the RAMs refresh now. If you see the Enter Pass notification after you did it, it means you did it all right. Assistive Touch can also help you set new functions to simple taps. Go to Settings, General, Accessibility, and in the Assistive Touch section, you can change any commands in the Custom Actions menu. For a double tap, I chose the screenshot, since a combination of Home plus Power button seems a bit inconvenient. To make a screenshot, tap the Accessibility menu circle twice. People with iPhones don't need a separate app for QR readers, since all the iPhones have them built in. Turn on the camera and point it to the code. You'll see the pop-up window on the top of the screen. Tap the window, and you'll go straight to whatever link the QR code had. If it doesn't work, enable the Scan QR Codes function in the camera settings. You can actually set any song you like for the alarm clock. Go to the alarm and press Edit in the right upper corner. Tap the time you want to change the melody for. In the Sound section, choose Pick a Song and go for any song added to your library. Disclaimer: Your best-loved song will probably turn into your worst enemy after a couple of mornings you use it as an alarm. One of the most hated problems of all iPhone users is when you run out of memory. Even if you delete the photos, there's still not enough space. Go to Settings, iPhone Storage, and make sure that recently deleted photos are actually deleted. If not, delete them in the storage sections. Note that your messages can contain heavy files, so you can restrict how long the message can be stored. In the Message History, tap the Keep Messages button. It's forever by default, but you can keep them for one year or even only 30 days. If you deal with many documents to be signed, this hack can help you sign them without even printing and scanning. Take a screenshot of the document you want to sign, then tap the screenshot to make changes. Tap the plus button in the right lower corner. Choose the signature button in the toolbar, and here we go! Sign the document with your finger, and save the changes by pressing the button marked Done. And so are we! 11% of people on vacation at a hotel room have found hidden cameras in their accommodation. Imagine how much higher the number would be if more people knew what they were looking for and how to do it. So how do you detect these hidden cameras? Let's say you've arrived at a random location for your vacation. You're renting out a lovely apartment. Take out your phone. It'll be an essential and beneficial source for finding clues of hidden cameras. Turn on your Bluetooth. Take a walk around the apartment, your room, bathroom, kitchen, and the passageway to the apartment. Monitor your phone to see if you can detect any unknown devices that appear on your screen. If something comes up, that's a good indication for a further thorough search. Even if you don't pick up anything on the Bluetooth, it's still a good idea to thoroughly search your accommodation anyway. Go to each room, take a close look around, and check the corners of the walls and ceiling, keeping an eye out for any suspicious holes. Holes are an unlikely place to find any cameras, unless you're in a haunted house from an old horror film. But it's still a good idea to check, regardless of how obvious it sounds. Now inspect all the movable objects, lamps, radios, television, shelves, and whatever else you can find sitting around. Check to see if they're facing at a strange angle, like if they were aimed towards your bed or bathroom. Once you've inspected everything with the lights on, turn them off. Some cameras may have small LED lights that can be in a range of colors. Go over the same area again, looking out for any suspicious lights. Make sure to check that the fire alarm is just a fire alarm. It's a common hiding place for cameras, as the fire alarm always has a blinking light. Approach the air vents and inspect closely. They would be capable of hiding larger cameras inside. Now that we've done a quick look in the dark, get a flashlight, or use your phone's flashlight, and shine that light around the room for an even more thorough search. Carefully look for any tiny glints of a camera screen. The reflection of the light will be minimal, so pay close attention to anything that glistens. Focus carefully on the inanimate objects in the room, reviewing every angle closely, even the susceptible plants. You can also utilize the selfie mode of your phone to detect infrared light sources in the dark, as it doesn't filter them out. These light signals can be found from night vision cameras 
which rely on their infrared waves to detect heat signatures when it's dark. Put your phone on selfie mode, leave the light off, and look around the room slowly while focusing on the screen. It'll be awkward moving around the dark room while looking at the screen in selfie mode, but try to keep an eye out for purple or white lights on the screen. Now that we've checked for cameras, it's time to review the mirrors. Cameras could be behind them, and someone could also be watching from the other side. First, determine whether they're built into the wall or can be adjusted. If the mirror is semi-transparent, it will be built into the wall. These aren't common in your bedroom typically, which would lead to suspicion. You can do a simple test to check the mirror. Simply press your fingertip onto the glass, pushing firm enough to ensure that there will be a fingerprint as you move your finger away. Focus closely on the fingerprint. If there is a small gap between the fingerprint and the mirror where the glass should be, then it's just a mirror. On a semi-transparent mirror, there will be no gap. The fingernail test is used similarly, detecting if there is a glass gap between the end of the fingernail and the mirror. However, both tests may be complex depending on the lighting in the room and the position the mirror is facing, so it's not a definitive test in all situations. Semi-transparent mirrors are generally built into the wall to ensure they work without being detected. The wall must completely cover the edges. The lighting on the hidden side requires a brighter light source than your side of the wall for it to work. Put your eyes right up to the glass to further confirm what kind of mirror you're dealing with. Cup your hands around your eyes, ensuring there is as little amount of light from your side, and look through to the other side. If there is a slight indication of light behind the mirror, or if you can see outlines of objects behind it, you have a semi-transparent mirror. A semi-transparent mirror will have an empty wall behind it, so another method to check is to simply tap the glass. The sound of tapping on a semi-transparent mirror will produce an empty sound. If privacy is still a considerable concern after learning how easy it can be to hide cameras, further options are accessible. You have many options for applications available on your phone. Some will review the Wi-Fi network to determine any suspicious behavior in the area, as all cameras and surveillance equipment will connect to the Wi-Fi. These apps help you detect the concerning names of devices and identify the brand and model of the devices, providing further confirmation there is a hidden camera nearby. With the many application devices available, Many anti-bug detectors can find hidden cameras, the body of wires, GPS, etc. There is a wide range of these detectors to choose from, depending on how much you want to spend. Security cameras have come a long way in recent history. In the world we live in now, you can find a camera in any shape and size. Anyone can purchase or modify a camera, and even place a camera where they like on their property. They are so advanced and inconspicuous that one could be watching you right now. The first surveillance cameras were installed in 1927. From then, surveillance in all forms has become more prominent throughout the world. The security camera's evolution has developed significantly. More so recently since the 1990s, when the development and variations have increased each year enormously. The application and the number of security cameras in public areas have grown so much that in 2021, there were estimated to be 1 billion security cameras worldwide. And considering most people have a phone or a computer device that more than likely has a camera attached, you can assume there will soon be more cameras than human beings on this planet. And if that's not concerning enough, there are also more secretive cameras out there that you're not even aware of inconspicuously watching your every move while on holiday, at work, at the gym, or even in your own home. Cameras today are so advanced that there are many out in the streets with facial recognition technology. Some are computer controlled, identifying an object, tracking it on its system, and categorizing the objects in its field of view. The definition in these cameras is so powerful they can zoom in and focus on the smallest of objects, so, when accessing an ATM, be sure to always cover the keypad when entering your PIN code. Hidden cameras are used discreetly, recording people while they're unaware. They can be wireless and fit inside all kinds of small spaces, like fire alarms, televisions, and many more objects that could fit a camera as small as a USB slot. 
making them all the more difficult to detect. Some places to be wary of hidden cameras are when you're moving into a new rental accommodation and when you're on vacation. There have been reports of cameras found in hotels and many other forms of accommodation. It's possible to find places all around the world with hidden devices. In some countries and regions, it's legal for a proprietor to have hidden cameras and other devices on their premises. But just because they may be within their legal rights in some instances to monitor their property, you still have the rights of your privacy and safety. You also have the option to talk to your host or landlord and question them as to whether there are hidden cameras. If you feel confident in doing this, when you pose the question to them, look closely to see how they react, taking careful attention to see how they respond and in what manner. If they're shocked by the question or simply don't say a word, it may be an indication to leave the premises immediately. But if you don't want that awkward exchange, we hope that we've provided enough tips to help you where we can. You're hiking the Point Reyes National Seashore and you bump into a mountain lion. Stay calm. You need to show it that you're not scared. Shout loudly at the lion. Wave your arms. If that doesn't work, start throwing rocks, branches, or anything else you can get your hands on. Aim at the ground in front of the lion. Never throw anything directly at it. That will only make it angrier. If the lion is getting closer, protect your most vulnerable spots. It will aim for the neck and try to grab your arms. So tilt your head forward and protect your neck. And don't make sweeping arm movements. When the lion realizes that you're not an easy opponent, it will probably back off and run away. You're in Yellowstone. Here you have to come face to face with the grizzly bear. It's drinking water from a creek. A safe distance is 200 feet. The grizzly has spotted you. It stands on its hind legs and looks in your direction. Now it's about the height of an average basketball player and it weighs almost 800 pounds. So you don't stand a chance to win. You have to freeze in place. Grizzlies have poor eyesight, so it just might not see you. But then it starts walking in your direction. Don't turn your back to it and don't even try to run as fast as you can. It will chase you. You need to seem bigger than you really are. Wave your arms and spread your legs a little wider. Always talk and shout at the bear. It will understand that you're not a humble deer. Try to make a clanking sound of metal. If you have food with you, don't throw it at the bear. Just put it on the ground and keep backing away while facing the bear. If it starts running towards you, your only chance is to fall to the ground and freeze. Bears aren't scavengers, so if it thinks you're not alive, it'll just sniff you, shrug, and walk away. Now you go diving on the Florida coast. You have to protect yourself from the great white shark. Never wear shiny and blinging jewelry when swimming. It attracts sharks. And never swim at night. This is when they go out looking for food. Lots of splashing water can also attract this marine predator. But if the shark swims towards you anyway, the rule here is one, do everything in your power to defeat it. Try to stay calm and swim to the shore. If the shark chooses you as food, there's only one thing that can scare it off. Try to punch the shark in the nose, eyes, or gills. Now you're in Africa. Here in the tall grass of the savanna, you see a lion, and worse, it sees you. The first thing you need to do is maintain eye contact. Don't turn your back to the lion and don't run. This eight-foot predator, weighing like three adults, is running at you at the speed of a car on the highway. But then it stops abruptly and continues to stare at you. Lions often make fake charges to frighten their opponent. At this point, you have to appear much bigger than you really are. Spread your arms and make loud noises. Then the lion can make another fake charge. And if you keep standing still, the lion will realize you're a strong opponent and go the other way. The female lion is way more dangerous than the male one. If it's guarding the babies, it won't stop and you won't stand a chance. Your safari jeep takes you to the next location. You see elephants peacefully drinking water. These guys can be 10 feet tall and weigh as much as two SUVs. They can even flip cars over with their powerful tusks. And now, one of them sees you and wags its big ears. It's bluffing. With those ears, the elephant wants to appear bigger and scare you away. It's also scared and won't run at you all the way. You must let the elephant know you're not threatening it. Don't yell or wave your arms. Take slow steps back until you leave the elephant's personal space. If it runs at you with ears to its head, it's not bluffing. Climbing a tree isn't a good option right now. It might ram the tree and you'll fall down. It might even tilt the tree with its strong trunk. You need to run in a zigzag pattern. The elephant is heavy and it's hard for it to change directions quickly. So gradually, you'll start to pull away from it. But still remember that an elephant can run 25 miles per hour, so you'll unlikely escape from it. Now let's move on to the Nile River. It has the largest number of crocodiles in the world. 
If you are camping, take a distance of at least 160 feet from the shore. This way, the crocodile will not stumble upon your camp at night. Never take your eyes off the crocodile. It can take advantage of that moment and take you by surprise. Their top speed is only 10 miles per hour, but they can make charges at 40 feet per second from the water. So the only chance to survive is to stay out of the water. If not, the crocodile's weak points are the eyes, the tip of the nose, and the membrane in the throat. This membrane prevents water from entering the crocodile's throat. When running away from a crocodile, be careful not to bump into a hippopotamus. This is one of the most dangerous animals in the world. They can be the size of a business class car and weigh as much as a big elephant. And they can run as fast as horses, so they're sure to outrun you in a sprint. The main thing is to not frighten it. If you're standing far away, get its attention with a loud sound. Usually they will try to get away from you. Use this moment to back away too. But if you see a hippo yawning, it's a sign that you're violating its comfort zone. They can open their mouth at 180 degrees and have the bite force of a crocodile. So you can't beat it and have to run. The best option is to climb a tree or some kind of slope. Hippos have a hard time climbing high places. And if you manage to escape, you'd be one of the few people who survived a face-to-face -face encounter with a hippo. There's also buffaloes living here in the savannah. They can be as tall as an adult and weigh a whole ton. And unlike lions and elephants, they don't make a fake charge. If you see this machine running at you, it definitely has evil intentions. Their powerful horns and skull can bend sheets of metal. They can turn a new car into a pile of scrap metal. You can never outrun a buffalo, so your only option is to find the nearest tree and run to it before the buffalo even starts its charge. If you run into a snake, you need to freeze in place. There are endless species of snake, and you don't know if your opponent is venomous or not. So you definitely need to avoid getting bitten. Make smooth and slow backward movements. If the snake is following you, stop and start stomping your feet. The strong vibrations of the ground should scare it away. If the snake bit you anyway, try to remember exactly what it looked like. Better yet, take a picture of it. To neutralize the venom, you need to take an antidote to the specific venom of that species of snake. You're on your way to Northeast Asia. As you're going through the dense jungle, you see a clearing. Several wild boars are peacefully grazing there. One of them is a female with several children. It'll do anything to protect them, so it's especially aggressive now. Oops, it spotted you. Get ready to defend yourself. If the wild boar is making high-pitched, piercing cries, it's going to strike you. The first thing you need to do is to stay calm and stand still. You have a good chance that the boar will go on its way, but you see it starting to run. And now you have several options. A, you can run away. B, you can face the blow. And C, climb the nearest tree. The first option is wrong. Wild boars can run almost as fast as Usain Bolt, and when it catches up to you, its sharp tusks won't leave you a chance. Option B, stay where you are. Wrong. A wild boar can weigh as much as a motorcycle and be almost as long as an adult. A hit at 25 miles per hour will just knock you down. So the correct option is to climb the nearest tree. If there's no trees, then climb a car or a tall rock. You have to be in a higher position than the boar. When it realizes it can't reach you, it'll leave you alone. The most important thing is to stay away from wild boars. Never try to feed them or provoke them. Now, if for some reason you ever, you know, decide to wake up a sleeping giant panda or cuddle it, just remember, that's a bad idea. Even fearless big cats like snow leopards are wary of bothering pandas in the wild. The ones you see in the zoo might not be that active but they still have a massive jaw that can deliver a powerful bite. Their huge false thumb lets them get a good grip on their enemies. The most misleading thing about the leopard seal is its mouth, which always appears to be smiling. But they're actually rather aggressive animals and effective lone hunters. They like to play cat and mouse with their food, which includes penguins, fish, squid, and even smaller seals. Not so long ago, a leopard seal even dragged a marine biologist deep underwater. Hey, stop playing with your food! Ant eaters feed on insects, citrus fruit, and avocados. Watch out! They have no teeth, poor vision, and bad hearing. Sounds kind of like my Uncle Rudy. They aren't aggressive and stay away from people. But if humans walk on their trails, ant eaters can turn fierce and may fight. They get on their hind legs, use their tails for balance, and attack with their claws that are strong enough to hurt a jaguar or a land rover. Fluffy alpacas may seem warm-hearted, 
but they still have ways of defending themselves. They can spit up to 10 feet, and you don't want that stuff getting in your eyes because it contains stomach acid, along with chewed up grass. They can bite with their sharp fighting teeth that are at the back of their mouths, and they have soft toes to give enemies a good kick. They can't really do more damage than you might get in a fight with a child, but it's best not to upset them. There are three things that brings out the nasty side of a Tasmanian devil. When there's a predator nearby, when they're competing for a mate, and when they're protecting their meal. Also Bugs Bunny, but that's a cartoon. These guys normally feed on insects, birds, frogs, and fish, and they like scavenging more than hunting. But if you intrude upon their home for any reason, be prepared for a painful bite. Their teeth are strong enough to eat through bones. Elephants are so clever that they understand the feelings of other elephants, and they even try to help each other. They can also take revenge on people who upset them. Elephants sometimes block roads and show up in the villages of people who have been mean to them. Male elephants get especially aggressive when fighting over females. Watch out for those huge feet, they can really do some damage. Better pack your trunk! Puffer fish can inflate to several times their normal size to protect themselves against predators. Hey, my brother-in-law can do that too. Eh, just kidding. Most animals shouldn't try eating them anyways. There's enough poison inside them to finish off 30 people, and there's no antidote. So, if it's just you, you'll need to invite some friends along to spread out the poison. Nah, I just made that up. Swans tend to see humans as the biggest danger to their homes and families. Male swans get especially aggressive during the spring nesting season from April to June. When kayakers, rowers, or anglers get too close to their nests, swans start hissing and flapping their wings. If you don't pay attention to these warning signs, the swan might even try to flip your boat over. Dolphins are the only species on the planet, apart from humans, that can take another creature's life for no logical reason. Males sometimes attack female dolphins or even baby ones, and they don't do it for food. If an angry dolphin chases you, you have no chance of outswimming it. They can move at 22 miles per hour. The top speed of Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps is only 6 miles per hour, so he can't help you. Slow lorises are the only venomous primates in the world. They carry poison in their elbows. It's transferred to their mouths during grooming to protect their babies. Plus, they scare off predators like pythons and eagle hawks using special markings that show how fearsome they are. If a slow loris bites a person who ends up on its territory or annoys it, the result can be rashes, anaphylactic shock, or, you know, even worse. Despite their massive weight and clumsy bodies, hippos can run much faster than people. And they have much sharper teeth. If you get in their way on their trip to the watering hole, their aggression kicks in. Before they attack you, though, they'll give you some warning signs. If you see a hippo yawn or make a sound like a laugh, it means it's about to get mad. Well, that's rather confusing, isn't it? Blue-ringed octopuses are really tiny, but their venom is a thousand times stronger than cyanide. They normally use it to hunt shrimp, crabs, and small fish. If this creature feels threatened, it'll flash its blue rings as a warning. If you don't pay attention, it may bite you. You might not notice the bite itself, but minutes later, you'll definitely notice the symptoms. Nausea, numbness, and even the loss of your senses and motor skills. So pay attention down there. Geographic cone snails are a seriously dangerous critter. They puncture their victims with a tooth that's like a harpoon and then inject their venom. If a small cone attacks you, it'll just feel like a bee sting. If you're unlucky enough to meet a larger one, though, it could cause numbing, swelling, muscle paralysis, changes to your vision, and even breathing difficulties. Canada geese have been living close to humans for years, but they're still wary of us getting near their homes, especially during the spring mating season. At this time, the male geese can chase and bite people that seem like a threat to their mates, eggs, or babies. If you want to avoid being attacked by this seriously angry bird, the best thing you can do is just slowly back away. Squirrels have a lot of enemies, both in the wild and in cities. 
Their superpower against all of them is their speed and agility. Most of the time, it's completely safe to go near them. But they can still be unpredictable like any wild animal. They go on biting sprees occasionally. And watch out, they carry infections like rabies. They're more likely to go after your pets or kids, but they can also bite adults. So, to play it safe, always walk behind your pets or kids to use them as decoys. Of course I'm kidding. If you ever see a kangaroo get up on its hind legs, back off. This is their way of warning you that they think you're a threat to their females or their food. They are real pros at boxing with each other, and they have really long legs and sharp claws. Kangaroos jump into the air to give extra force to their kicks, which are powerful enough to break bones. A platypus doesn't have teeth, and it mainly eats insects and shellfish. It's one of only two mammals that lay eggs. But these strange things can still do you harm. Male platypuses have sharp spurs hidden on the heels of their hind feet. There's venom in these spurs that's strong enough to take down a dog. Koalas get most of their hydration from eating eucalyptus leaves, and they get all the protection they need from their sharp teeth and claws. When a koala scratches someone that wants to cuddle them a little too hard, they can pass on some unpleasant infections. <laughs> Raccoons can easily adapt to any environment, including your backyard. They rarely attack humans directly, but can damage your property and make you sick. They'll go anywhere to get some food, from trash cans to bird nests. And this is where they can catch a lot of different infections. Apart from disease, raccoons can give humans nasty wounds that take a long time to heal. When it thinks you're threatening its dam, a beaver will start slapping the water with its tail as a warning sign. If you ignore it, it'll try to use its sharp teeth against you to protect its family. So, it's better to just leave it to beaver. Hey, there's a special knife you can use to protect yourself against attack called a beaver cleaver. No wait, that's an old TV show. Otters spend a lot of their time swimming on their backs, and they don't care about cleaning up after themselves. That's why they leave behind bits of fish that attract insects carrying diseases. Apart from being so messy, they also have powerful teeth that can be used against any unwanted visitor. Cassowaries are the most dangerous birds on the planet. One of these can weigh as much as an adult person, and it has long, powerful legs and sharp claws. They can chase after you at 30 miles per hour. Luckily enough, they try to avoid fights. But if you don't want to be the target of their karate moves, keep a safe distance and don't provoke them. Got that? Good. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.